what they charge in all sense. Hey, brother. Yeah, we used to do Good evening, everybody. We're going to bring the August 23rd, 2017 planning board meeting to order. We're going to start with a silent moment for prayer and then followed by the oath of allegiance. Okay, adequate notice of this meeting has been provided indicating the time and place of the meeting in accordance with Chapter 231 of the Public Laws of 1975 by advertising a notice in the Star Gazette and the Express Times and by posting a copy on the bulletin board in the Municipal Building. Let's do a roll call. Here. Here. Prior. Here. Schneider. What? Here. Mr. 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 Here. Hearing none, I'll take a motion for approving the May 31st minutes. Motion. Second. Second. Roll call. Yes. Members Correa? Yes. Consinnons? Yes. Fryer? Yes. Wolf? Yes. Mary McKay? Yes. Mr. Chesky? Yes. Yes. We'll move on to the June 28th, 2017 minutes for approval. Any comments on those? Hearing none, we'll do a roll call for June 20, 2017 minutes. I have a motion and a second. Oh, sorry. Motion. Thank you. Second. Second. Okay. Roll call. Members Correa? Yes. Lieutenant? Yes. Pryor? Yes. Wolf? Yes. Mary McKay? Yes. Vice Chairman Chesky? Yes. Yes. Real quick, was, was there, were all the planning board members present on the June meeting? I can't. Uh, the June meeting, we had three of the Simmons, Fox, Pryor, Schneider, Wolf, Mayor McKay, Vice Chairman Chesky, and Chairman Johnson. Okay, great. Thank you. Next item on the agenda is the I-78 Commerce Park, the preliminary not final major site plan and preliminary major subdivision for the connector road. Um, and we already have completed the tour of the property, which lasts from about 5.30 to 6.30. So the applicant is here. So, good evening, Chairman, board, uh, members of the board, public. Uh, my name is Carl Kemp. I'm the attorney for the applicant. Um, we've provided notice in accordance with the municipal land use law and the Open Public Meetings Act for uh, the meeting today, as well as the site tour. And um, we have board has jurisdiction to hear this matter. As I discussed with the board secretary, I just want to put a quick overview of the site tour. So at 5:30 to about 6:15, 6:30, as the chairman indicated, uh, we took a bus ride uh, the entire site in both Phillipsburg and Lopakong. We had uh, about six board members and 12 members of the public, as well as staff, um, toward the site. Uh, the uh, uh, Mr. Grau, the applicant, gave an overview of some of the history of the property and current status and where the um, Lopakong uh, warehouse would be built, some other features. So I was glad we were able to do that, and I hope it was in instructful to the board and the public. Um, and so now we're starting our meeting at 7. As the chairman indicated, we have the application on for the uh, preliminary final site plan and preliminary subdivision. The main purpose of the application, as the board is well aware, is to construct what we call the connector road, which will um, start in Phillipsburg at the intersection of Roseberry and Center Street, traverse the property up to Route 22, where there will be a new traffic light and interchange constructed. Uh, there's also a stub road off of that to Building 24. 
um, as the engineer will go through in his testimony and, and show you the plan set, that has changed slightly from the original general development plan that the board reviewed uh, for, for a number of reasons. Uh, primarily, building 24, as indicated, is remaining. That is a uh, building for Curtis Wright. They do certain testing for the Navy, and they need that building. It's one of two buildings in the country that performs that function. So we had to accommodate that. We also had to accommodate, uh, in doing so, um, there's the existing um, closed landfills and some other environmental features, and so we had to readjust the road. In doing so, some of the phasing of the general development uh, plan was changed slightly in Lopakong. The changes were more pronounced in Phillipsburg. Uh, when we were there last month, we had the same application we're showing you, um, and those changes, uh, and again, the engineer will walk through. There's a very minor change to um, the uh, phasing in Phillipsburg, really, I'm sorry, in Lopakong, really just timing of the building in accordance with the Phillipsburg building and um, time frames are pretty much the same. So that, that's the overview. Uh, we have received the reports of August 17th and 18th from the board engineer and the board planner. We will certainly address those. Um, most of those comments are acceptable. I think there's been very little conversation on that. Um, so I think that's plenty of an overview on this. Mr. Uh, Spazaro has anything he wants to add about the site visit or anything of that nature? Okay, he's not. No. At this point, um, the set of the set of plans that we were referring to. This is this is the current set. So it's dated August 7, 2017. <coughs> correct. I'll have the engineer confirm that. Okay. Have I think you're correct, Jeremy. Uh, so the, the witness I have tonight is uh, Mr. McGrath, our engineer. We'll swear him in a minute. We do have other members of our development team here. Should the board or the public have additional questions? So, Mr. McGrath. And yes, it is August. Okay. okay. Thank, Thank you. Great answer. Do you swear from the testimony you will give in this matter will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I do. State your name. Spell your last name for the record, please. Thomas T. McGrath, N-C-G-R-A-T-H. And, Mr. McGrath, since we were here last time, you're still a licensed professional engineer in the state of New Jersey? Yes, I am. And um, the board accepted his qualifications last time. Um, we, have, we, have, we will accept his qualifications. So I'll turn it over to you, Mr. McGrath. And just actually, sorry, one other note. The, um, we did have a sign-in sheet for the, uh, the site visit. I have given a copy to the board secretary for the board's file. She's provided me a copy for mine, so that will be part of the public record. Okay, good. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you, Mr. McGrath. Well, if I can suggest one thing that we can first, and this may be what you were going to do anyway, just go over the changes to uh, the amendments to the GDP so we can vote on that, get that out of the way, uh, because I think that should be a separate resolution, and then we can get into the site plan itself. Certainly. Um, Tom, if you wouldn't mind, do you have one that shows the original layout? Where's that? No, we don't. That's right. Yeah. Just... Um, if you would just say, again, describe the exhibit you're using. If it hasn't been changed since the plan set, do we need to mark it as A1 tonight, or just give us the title block? Just give us the title uh, block. This, this panel is the, actually the overall pad ready site plan, which has the phasing on it, which is identical to what the GDP has as part of it. Do is that, that, is that part of the submission package? It's part yeah. of the plan submitted. Yeah, so just give us, if you would, so the just title sheet it number. So I, so I know and the board knows what you Okay. It's sheet number 5 of 31 of the packet that was delivered. It's got an original date of March 20, 2017, with revision August 7, uh, 2017. Okay. Um, trying to find a place where I'm not blocking it. I'm going to squeeze right here so I can stand beside it. Uh, what Carl had mentioned earlier was that the Curtis Wright building here, I'm pointing to in the middle of the Phillipsburg site, um, is, all, is in phase 1A. Uh, original plan, Curtis Wright building was to be removed and um, we had to revise our general development plan to accommodate that, that structure. So that's basically in the center of the Phillipsburg portion of the site. Um, the other changes that were done were there, were some, there were some environmental constraints in this area here, uh, two inverse ponds uh, was suggested to us or mandated to us uh, from DEP that we should not 
uh, put our road network over the top of it. Those have been closed. They're permitted, and everything's finished with them. So what had happened here is this road alignment has changed. Um, other than those two, as I'll call them, major changes to the configuration or the layout, um, the other change had to do with the scheduling of uh, the particular buildings and how they're and how they're phased through the site. And if I can, I think I'll, if I sit, maybe so everybody can see. Um, we have the phasing schedule here, which is the same phasing that we is put on what I'll call the present um, general development plan. The phasing originally, I believe, uh, is six. Uh, phases presently now it's been reduced to three phases because of um, the scheduling of how things need to come online uh, from a construction standpoint uh, phase 1a uh, is the route 22 lock street intersection which was always phase uh, 1a and that would be the area up here adjacent to route 22 and you'll see it says again on this on sheet 5 it says phase 1a we move down the chart, there's two buildings that are slated to come online next. Both of them will be started in 2018. Uh, the building two would be in the second quarter of 2018, and building seven would be in the third quarter of 2018. The reason that building two is in front of building seven, building two is closer uh, in size, and it would be part of um, the construction phasing uh, as to how the site is put together. Phase one includes the interchange. It also includes the connector road. So the connector road comes from Route 22, traverses through the site, the back on, and then it traverses down through the Phillipsburg site and out onto uh, Roseberry and Center Street intersection. By constructing this roadway, building two actually is, is kind of being coming because of the way the road is being laid out building two the platform for it is going to be online sooner than the, the platform uh, for building seven they're slated to be just a little bit behind in that it's the, the removal of the material uh, in the area of building seven and creating the uh, interconnection road by moving that material so if you look on the phasing schedule now they're both in phase 1b uh, but they're just, you know, a couple of months apart from each other. Um, Excuse me, number seven is in Lopac? <laughs> number seven is the Lopac building. Okay. That's 950,000 square feet. And number two is in Phillipsburg, and that's five, 500,000 square feet. Uh, we move down the chart. There's a 1C, which is a 630, uh, I'm sorry, 535 1,500 square foot building, which is building three, and that is this building here, which we are presently doing a, a fill operation on that pad, and based on the scheduling, that will also come in line on um, the third quarter of 2018. We move further down the list, and then we have uh, phases two. There's two, two parts of phase two, two buildings, five and six. Five and six are along Green Street, and the value section of Phillipsburg, and then built the third phase are buildings four and one. Excuse me, building four is adjacent to uh, building seven and we'll pack on. It's in this quadrant right here. And building one is, <coughs> excuse me, is this larger building that will be right in here called phase three. And you'll see that these are outlined in phase three. And that's basically, um, from a revision standpoint or a change standpoint from what was originally the GDP, uh, it, was, it was how the phasing broke down and the majority of it had to do with how the construction was going to be brought on uh, after things changed with this uh, interconnector road and the Curtis Wright building. But, yeah, I mean, the, the, if you look at uh, also in phase 1A, the detention basin will be, break, will, will be brought online. Uh, that's required as part of the reconstruction, uh, I'm sorry, the construction of the connector road which runs through here. This is the, the main detention basin that services the majority of the site. Uh, 
I have a quick question for Tony, but you can hop in if you can help him out. Um, I had a month off. Pardon me? I had a month off. Uh, back when we approved the GDP, um, I think we gave him a 10-year time frame? Yes. So these, this schedule is really just informational rather than... Well, it's substantive, but it doesn't start the clock all over again, in my opinion. It, the clock started when that plan was approved. And, the and he has 10 years from now, so we're not adjusting the 10 years. That, that, that's correct. That correct. stays. Just, yeah. But if they miss this schedule, nothing really happens. Is that true? When, if they miss the schedule and they're outside of the confines of the GDP, they'd have to come back for... Well, uh, two, uh, two, uh, eight, let's say 218 slips to 219. They're still in the 10 years. Mm -hmm. They're just a year later. Correct. True. So that's true. Right. Yes. So the, the schedule, were, this is not an ironclad schedule. They have 10 years from the date of approval to implement the whole plan. Basically, so, yes. Okay. If, if I can follow up on that, does that also mean that the order of the phases is also set? So the low pack on building is basically going up. Yeah, we, we've the agreed to, the, to go up. We've agreed to the phasing um, schedule in regard to the the order of the buildings being constructed, uh, especially the first handful. We may have, um, which we've uh, as we discussed last time with this board as well as Phillipsburg, we're bringing both of those online at the same time uh, due to the sizes that they may finish a little later, but they're going to be brought on at the same time. So the order of the buildings we've agreed to, I think, as we get farther down, for example, buildings, which would be outside of low pack on, as you realize if there's one large building, those may change, which will have to go to Phillipsburg, and we'll certainly advise you folks as well that it's going to change in Phillipsburg, because uh, we've you know, agreed with both towns to keep both towns abreast of what's going on in the other town, because as you can see driving out there, boundary lines make no, no difference. Um, so we're aware of impacts to both towns. We'll keep you advised as progress on both. So I, I trust that answers your question, Mr. Frank. Okay, thank you. Um, is there any more questions? Um, as Mr. Spisaro asked us, we're gonna deal with the, the change in the phasing first. Um, we have nothing further to add, certainly answer any questions of the board at this juncture. Any further board member questions on the phasing? Thank we. I don't have any problems. I looked at the changes. They're fairly minor in nature as far as the uh, timing of the work. Um, I do agree that uh, you know, the, the schedule was to provide some direction, but it's really market-based. And, and I think the 10-year period, they just have to get things done in the 10-year period. I think it's something that should be looked at in every site plan application. There should be, uh, there should be a, the GDP, I should say, should be submitted into the board with any decisions they're proposing and should be updated and, and re-approved by the board as, as part of every proceeding. And I think that's what they're doing tonight. Okay. Looks like that covers the, we're comfortable with the phase change then. Thank you, Chair. It's no problem. We want to go public now? Yep. Okay, so any public comments on the schedule and phasing, what we just talked about here? Public comments now. Or questions, actually, public questions. I see none. So, looks like you're okay there. So, we'll close public on this and move on. Let's entertain a motion to approve the amended redevelopment plan as described by Mr. Graff. So that'll be our, that could be a separate resolution and independent yes. on itself. Absolutely. Okay. Look for a motion on that. I will make that motion. Okay. Second. We have a second. Second. Roll call. Who is my second? Five. One, two. With no further comments, we can do roll call. I just say I'm, I almost consider the changes de minimis. So I really don't have a problem with them. No. And yes. 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 Okay. Continue. Thank you. So now we'll get into the uh, site plan and subdivision. And Mr. Graff, please pick up where you left off. And also choose, as I said before, we're we're calling these pad ready sites, but there's no buildings proposed at this point. It's just the road, the infrastructure, the, the interchange, and the stormwater basins. But Mr. McGrath will give you those details. Thank you, Mr. McGrath. 
Um, the first panel I was proposing to discuss tonight is in your plan set. Uh, it's the existing conditions map. It's sheet three of 31. Original date is uh, March 20th, 2017, revised to August 7th, 2017. Um, basically what it's showing is the condition of the site uh, prior, actually prior to when the demo started on uh, the solar surf portion of it. Uh, what I've done is highlighted in orange on this to indicate where the Lepacon portion of the whole development is. And I just thought that, you know, for some people who, uh, you know, have not seen it to start with, that um, they, you know, they get a, a better sense as to the size of what we're talking here. Uh, this parcel of land is just a little over 100 acres. It's 100.99 acres. Uh, it has frontage along 22, obviously, with board members and the public who were there today is where we park. Uh, it also has the border with uh, Phillipsburg, and to the south it borders uh, Block Street and Lepacon Creek. Uh, the site generally in its condition the way it is today, from a high point um, adjacent to the north end, I'll call it, of um, the Lepac on Phillipsburg's border, it, it drains or grades generally down towards Route 22 uh, to about the midpoint of the project, and then it starts to slope off rather severely towards uh, the Lepac on Creek Lock Street area. I'm um, using this panel only just to give you a general flavor as to what we're dealing with when we get to the other panels. That's really all I have on this one. Um, Um, the next panel that I am using um, this evening is called the overall site plan. It's sheet 4 of 31. Same March 20th, 2017, original date with a revision, uh, August 7, 2017. Uh, what this does is give you a flavor as to, um, you know, aside from, we used the um, phasing plan originally, that was to be my third panel, but kind of shift things up a little bit. It's, it's similar to the phasing plan. The phasing plan did not have the buildings on it. Right. What this panel shows is the, the building layout as it's proposed today to give you a general idea. We were out in the field. We were talking about, you know, the connector road and how it interacts with uh, Route 22. Well, when we were parked with our bus, we were just about midpoint of the Lepacon uh, portion of it, a long 20 portion of the project, along 22. Uh, this right here, if you remember when we were out there, there were two poles that were closer to, to the to uh, 22. Uh, that was this portion of the interchange uh, that's going to, that's being proposed uh, off of 22. I'll stay with that for a couple of seconds. That um, is going to be a new traffic light as it comes off of Route 22. Uh, if you're coming from the east heading basically west along Route 22, you will have the opportunity after this is constructed to be able to make a left turn at a traffic light. There will be two left turn lanes and make a left turn into the project. Um, you would be on 22 here and you would be able to enter the project. Uh, you would also, if you were leaving the project, you would have the opportunity to go east on 22 or west on 22. The signalized intersection will give you the opportunity to be able to make that left that you currently can't make. Uh, also, staying along the Route 22 corridor, we are looking at improvements to Lock Street. Lock Street, again, is the boundary of our property as it leads up to Route 22. We're improving the entrance to the uh, location of Lock Street to be able to provide access out to 22 so that when you come out of Lock Street, you don't have to make that hard right anymore to try to go back down 22. It will also give you the opportunity when you get to that intersection to be able to make a left, which you currently can't do. Connector Road. There we go. The connector road uh, traverses through the Lepac on site. And the reason I was bringing the first pat this this other panel out, yeah. which was sheet three. Uh, Mr. McGrath, if you if, if, just that way a little bit. Try, if, I'm if, trying if, not to. 
put the pointer in his face. How about if I go over here? That would be better. That would work. You can stand at the podium and be even I can do that. Thank you. Okay. Um, the connector road comes along what would be the southern end of the proposed building seven. Building seven's a 950,000 square foot building. Uh, and you'll notice that when I went to panel three to start with, I indicated about how the slope, as you get past the midpoint uh, of the site, the grade starts to fall off pretty quickly. Right? So what we're proposing to do in here is material is going to be moved along or in the footprint of what would be the development for building seven. It's going to be excavated on the uphill side uh, which would be the north end of the site, and that material then would be carted to the south side to be able to create this platform then that we're, we're using for the Route 22 um, interchange. And then likewise, coming down through the site into Phillipsburg, it would be creating the actual connector road. The connector road is going to be elevated from the surrounding area that would be to the south. There'll be a retaining wall that supports the, the connector road. The platform then for building uh, seven would be generated and material would start to be moved at simultaneously uh, with the connector with the construction of the connector road. Uh, again, the connector road comes down through the project. The other buildings will be coming online uh, as um, projected through our, our phasing schedule. I have. We have a question. Sorry, a quick question, Mr. McGrath. Um, what is the difference in uh, elevation from one side to the other side? that you're going to build up? Well, um, 10 feet, 20 feet? Uh, now, that's, I'm trying to get to give you some kind of reference point. Yeah. Okay. Uh, we are looking uh, at the south side of the project. I believe the retaining walls are going to be, I don't have them in front of me, but I believe they're going to be in the neighborhood of uh, 15 to 18 feet in height along this end here. And we will be excavating up in this north corner here um, and I wish I had you know better numbers for you, but I, I'm going to say probably around 25 or 30 feet, depending upon exactly where we are on the site. Because this corner right here, which is the north uh, east corner, uh, I mean, it's the northwest corner of the site, uh, that kind of goes up pretty quickly right there. And we're going to have to dig that out. And you'll notice that there's a little dark line here on mm -hmm. that corner. That's a retaining wall to support the balance of what is going to be on that site. Not which is going to be left wall out there. We're going to stop there and, and drop the grade. So what happens is this building, being a 950,000 square foot building, there's no breaks in the building. It's all one elevation across the whole thing. Mm -hmm. So that whole footprint that you're looking at there um, is you know, going to be at that one grade, and I could probably... But on the ones to the south side, I guess, it's going to be about 18 feet higher, the exterior wall, including the foundation wall? Yeah, we're talking here? Yeah. Now, the, when I said 18 feet higher, I'm saying this area right in here is going to be about 18 feet higher. The grade from the connector road up to the platform for the building, there's probably another 8 or 10 feet of grade change where it climbs up on the hill. We didn't want to do was fill all this in here because these walls would wind up being, you know, an area of like 25 or 30 feet tall. Right. So we figured if we stepped it as we came up into the project, it would be better. Can I just clarify for myself sure. before you leave that? Uh, if you stand in the center of the road and you look uh, towards Pohatcong. This area here? Yeah. Okay. Th that road is going to be supported by a retaining wall? That's correct. 18 feet high? That's good about that. Yeah. Right. Okay, and it's then as you look towards uh, Peber, that'll be a grade further, uh, going up further to the the building final grade? Yes. Another eight feet or so? Yeah, it depends on the area that you're at because, you know, one what happens is the platform stays at one elevation, the road starts yeah, to fall I, away I, from the road. Now, I'm, I'm going to go back to the hearing we had for the general plan, and I, I do have a question. I'm still a little confused about pedestrians going through the site and sidewalks and no sidewalks and I get a little confused by that. I, I think that road is going to be open to pedestrians. Um, our, our take on that, and Carl, you can, work, you can work with this also, is that we are not intending to put sidewalks I understand that, site. but you're going to allow pedestrians through there. Uh, the, the, intent, the intent was we can certainly get more detail. The intent was to have the entire connector road 
not to be a pedestrian access way uh, due to the the truck traffic that will be on there, the size of the trucks. Um, as you know, as a pedestrian walking along there, it would be rather intimidating and uncomfortable. Um, so we were not proposing any sidewalks along the connector road. The, um, the anticipated use for the public as far as the property would be along the Lopac Concrete. There's the recreation center and trail network that will be in Lopac as well as Phillipsburg, um, going from the Valley View all the way parallel to the creek up to uh, Lock Street area more or less. So that, that was the anticipated use for public pedestrians, recreation, walking and things of that nature. Uh, and that was the intent and that was the um, approvals we received in Phillipsburg. So the section of the connector road uh, that is within Phillipsburg from the Lopacon boundary all the way to the uh, intersection of Roseberry and Center Street will not have sidewalks. That, that has Will it be close to pedestrians? If you it's it's going to be a private road, so it's, yeah. I mean we can certainly sign it. No pedestrians. I'm just saying you got a you got a road that's 18 feet in the air with no sidewalks and. Well, that's another good reason not to have sidewalks. It's 18 feet. It's in good the air. reason to keep pedestrians there. Yeah, um, mm -hmm. as I indicated, that, that that those were our reasons for not providing you know pedestrian access along that road. Plus, again, normally, and reasonable minds may disagree, but normally, the pedestrian is for you have nearby residential, you have nearby uses for people to walk to. Um, there is well, not people walk to the mall or what, you know, I mean, I mean it's that's, that's certainly for some people. Certainly possible. Again, the, the interconnectivity of the um, from Valley View up the uh, path um, would be a nice walk to the mall versus on a road. Um, and, and those were, our, you know, our reasons as to why we, we did not. Would you allow public vehicles through there? Yeah, the, the road would be what we would call a quasi-public road. So it would be it would be owned, uh, fully owned and maintained by the developer. The um, public would be allowed to traverse the road. Um, we've had the same discussion with Phillipsburg and proposed the same for Lopacon. We will um, request of the town. Uh, which is required under law to have the Title 39 motor vehicle laws enforced in the road. That gives the um, police the authority to, to patrol that, to write tickets if people are speeding, and any, any other motor vehicle violations. Uh, we also propose, um, taking the thunder away from our traffic expert, Mr. Uh, McGrath, that the uh, speed limit is, Mr. Kennel, I'm sorry, um, uh, be a 25 mile an hour speed limit due to the, again, we have trucks. And again, like I said, the users mostly going to be the, the truck traffic in and out and then employees of the individual warehouses in and out. Um, as far as people who may be walking, your point is taken, people may want to take a nice long walk to the mall, which I could use myself. Um, but it, again, that was not really anticipated. So to follow up on that comment, we were saying, well, what's the reason for pedestrians to use that? They would have to have a facility. Well, we kind of just built one for them. We built a little small park. That almost brings the need for the sidewalk back into it and definitely walking to the mall as well. I think we definitely need to talk about this sidewalk issue because I don't know how we're going to keep bikers and pedestrians out of there. When it, it can it's certainly just be posted for that. Again, the... the um Envisioning the, the use of the recreation areas in both Phillipsburg and Lopaca, we, we had the same conversations with Phillipsburg, by the way, um, and the point's well taken. The, there's parking areas for the public, um, for the um, recreation areas. Um, there's certainly access to, you know, use those to, to walk and connect to Lo, uh, Lock Street, sorry, and also in the Valley View area, here in the street in Valley View. I think it's green is where it attaches oh, there. Gate Street? Gate, yeah. And it, it connects there. There's a parking lot down there. And um, that, again, that was the anticipated public pedestrian recreation use of the of the facility was along there, and the road um, was basically um, to be for truck and, and not pedestrian. And, and they're often built that way. If you look at large um, warehouse campuses and warehouse layouts, those those roads uh, often do not have sidewalks for that reason. Is due to the truck traffic and. You know, generally people usually walk within a handful of blocks to go to a, a grocery store or a deli or, or things of that nature, and that's not the case here. The, the workers from the uh, warehouses will be anticipated to drive into Phillipsburg and Lopacon to you know frequent delis, restaurants, whatever else needs they may have. 
uh, and not to really be walking. So that, that's I'm our. I'm just that's trying to visualize it. You, know, you got somebody walking through there. You got a road with an 18 foot drop off. You probably got a, a shoulder and a guardrail. And a fence. Pardon me? And a fence. I'm and, sorry. And a fence. And a fence. And a fence. But there's no room for, I don't know, you know, you got bad weather, you got all that, if you really want a pedestrian on, on there. Yeah, again, it wasn't anticipated, and, and um, the uh, approvals in Phillipsburg do not, uh, we had the waiver, so there's going to be no sidewalks in the Phillipsburg portion of the project. Have they approved that site plan? Yes, that's already been approved um, two weeks ago. Thank you. With, with that road, I'm not sure where, it, you know where that section 8 housing in, in Phillips Rock is, the project? Mm -hmm. Where in relation to, would that road provide a shortcut for the people from that area who oftentimes don't have cars? Would that provide a shortcut to the mall? I mean, anything could be a shortcut, as I indicated, what was anticipated. I mean, people might want to take a different route. What was anticipated was the use of the recreation. I know what it is anticipated, but it would provide a shortcut to the model for the people who are living in, in the Section 8 housing in people, right? Yeah, that's certainly possible. They could okay. certainly want to take that road. And again, we, we will probably be signing the road in the Phillipsburg, and that it's for vehicles only, uh, you know, no pedestrians, uh, okay. because of the... Uh, the granting of the waiver for installing sidewalks in Phillipsburg. Uh, questions on that issue? I, th I think we're going to come back to this. Yeah, I mean, obviously, obviously when visit. the traffic expert comes up, but um, I think we can all sit on that comment and think about it a little bit. I just want to end with I, I think Phillipsburg would be more apt to use that as a walking or, or bicycle route than Lopacon would, but it still doesn't change the fact that it's, you know, it's probably going to be used that way. But I think we can revisit that. We certainly, more oh, we certainly time. can, I and mean, that's the purpose of the hearing. I mean, we can talk about any issues in any order. If you want, while we're on the topic, we can have the traffic expert or come up now, or if you want to you want to bring him up later, your pleasure, Mr. Chairman. I'd, I'd be more up for keeping the order of your... Okay, certainly. All right, Tom. Did you agree? Well, yeah, Mr. Chairman, just a few points on this. Yep. Uh, the board's attention to this matter is warranted. There is an ordinance requirement to put sidewalks on the street, so the, the applicant needs a waiver. I'd also want to note to the board that the township has implemented a complete streets policy, and what that means is when we have development projects or roadway projects we're supposed to be looking at these very streets and trying to uh, I guess design them in a way that, to incorporate all tri types of travel modes whether it be bicyclists, walkers and motor vehicles so these are things that the board should be looking at and George and I both commented in our letter on this as well I, I, have a, I actually have a question on that. Is there a difference between a township public road and a private road when it comes to that ordinance? I would have to get that resolution out to answer that question. I don't, I don't believe there are, but I would need to confirm that for a meeting next week. I can, I can forward to the board members the resolution that the township council adopted a few years ago on that. The redevelopment plan also has a mention in that sidewalks are to be provided. Uh, so that is in the, regardless of the street thing it, it, it's to be provided and also I would say that we are producing a plan uh, hopefully very successfully 3 million square feet of new space to me it makes a lot of sense to allow people to ride bikes or walk into the project uh, as an example one of the things in our letter in the, in the streets is that obviously at 3rd street where the bridge is if the pedestrian connection was made across 22 there, that they could actually walk over and come across that bridge, that's very close to coming into this project from, from the housing side of low pack on. So I think that it has some merit to be discussed further. I think clearly at least a single-sided sidewalk on the spine road might make a lot of sense. Uh, it also will accommodate people that at their lunch break or something like that that just wants to go out and run I mean, that sounds strange, but I mean, some of these projects, people actually at lunch go out and do exercise. Having sidewalks gives them a place to go other than run through their own parking lot or something. And uh, 
So I think it's something that the board should think about as part of this application. Yeah, George, you just made me think of something else. A lot of these sites provide a common cafeteria or something like that where people from all the different employers or warehouses can go eat or do something. Well, I don't, I don't know if that's in the plan. But no, I don't, but I'm asking because certainly that generates foot traffic among the, um, among the buildings, among the sites. Or a good food truck. Pardon me? Or a good food truck. Yeah, that too. Yeah, I mean, those, those lots of things can generate right pedestrian <laughs> traffic. So, so if everybody's comfortable, we'll talk about this more um, down the road. A uh, couple of things that I wanted to uh, to bring up why I had this panel up um, were the requirement for building setbacks and buffers as to how they relate to the project. Uh, there is a um, buffer dimension here uh, on this on this plan. There's a hundred foot buffer along the whole frontage of our project and along the side here. Uh, there is also a 150 foot uh, building setback which runs along our frontage uh, down to uh, Lock Street. Along Lock Street, I think the building setback was reduced to a um, 100 feet. Um, basically, all I wanted to say about this panel right now, I have another panel that kind of puts together um, all the pad ready site plan sheets together so you can look at it as a composite. Uh, it's the way the plan is laid out or our set is laid out, it's kind of difficult to put everything together. So what I did was I had a um, smaller scale plan put together so you can see it as a composite. And what it would be, it would just be the development in the LAPAC on site. Uh, this panel is not uh, part, it is part of the set. Um, I'll explain it to you and tell you what it is. It's labeled site grading plan, um, site, site and grading plan sheets, sheets 6, 7, 8, 9, and 10. The scale of the drawing, the way it sits right here is 100 scale, where your plan set is 50 scale. And it's dated today. I had this printed today so we can discuss it. Yeah. Oh, Tony, should we mark that one because that's been yeah. different than the plan yes, set? please. A1 with tonight's date be sufficient? Yes. If you would please mark that, Mr. McGrath, before you continue. <clears throat> okay, it's been marked A1 and dated today's date. Um, First thing I'd like to, to uh, bring to your attention, and again, I'm, I'll go back over here. On, on this panel, uh, there is a connection shown here. This is the temporary construction entrance that we proposed, and we have uh, permits from, from DOT. Purpose of the construction entrance is to be able to get, obviously, the equipment on site so that we can start the construction of the site. Uh, from your visit today, you saw that there's a substantial, I don't call it substantial, but there's a grade that you have to climb as you go onto the site and then it falls <laughs> off. What needs to be corrected so we can get uh, construction equipment in and out of the site? So just to the north, along 22, we're proposing um, a construction entrance, and what it does is it gives the ability for construction vehicles to come down, make a right onto the project, enter the project, uh, and then leave uh, making a right onto 22. <coughs> Having this construction entrance right here also gives us the ability then not to be working on top of ourselves when we're trying to do the construction of the traffic signal on Route 22. You'll see there's some distance between them. I think it's like about 600 feet between the two um, <coughs> connection points to 22. This is intended entirely to be a temporary construction entrance and what it does is again gives us the ability to bring the construction equipment on site. Um, once they're on site, they're in here, then you know the bigger machineries and things like that can start to move the material that needs to be moved and we can start creating this platform that you're looking at. The plan that you have in front of you is called a pad ready site plan. All right, What that does is that gives us a platform for building. It's not intended to actually be the, the building footprint or the building platform. It's getting us pretty close to grade 
so that when uh, the occupant comes here, we have the actual physical <coughs> design. This material can be spread out. We can provide that platform I was talking about before, which would be one elevation then from about where it says lot one on this sheet right here to the north all the way across <coughs> just before we get uh, down onto the connector road to the south of the building footprint. Also, what you'll see on here are the utilities that we're proposing as part of that uh, pad ready site plan. These utilities are intended to be uh, twofold. They're to address, and I'm pointing specifically right now to uh, this line of pipe. It used to work. There we go. Um, these lines of pipes along here, these are drainage pipes. They're large um, diameter pipes. Those are intended to be the basis of the future development of the site. We're putting those in now to be able to provide uh, drainage and places for that runoff that comes off the site uh, to uh, collect to. So that would be these utilities in here. And you'll see that they are collected then through a string and then it traverses down the embankment and into the proposed uh, detention basin. Now, if we go back to the phasing plan, I indicated earlier that that detention basin uh, is in phase 1A and the vast majority of it, I'm talking is maybe a little bit of a corner of it falls into Lepacon, but the vast majority of it is on the uh, Phillipsburg site. Can I ask a, a question on the a finished site? Will any drainage at all go to Route 22? Okay. Um, as part of the development of the site, we are proposing, um, I'll go to the finished site first, okay? This area right in here uh, is intended to be a bioretention basin. So we're working out the details for that right now uh, with DOT and then we'll be with DEP. Uh, and what that, that will be um, not, not a real detention basin. In other words, it's not there for stormwater management. If we look at how the existing project, and we're going to go back to panel three now. Go back to the existing panel. Um, I indicated before that the vast majority of the site, the middle, from, from the middle of the site here, excuse me, I'm going to try to squeeze right here. So from the middle of the site here, heading in the northern direction, all of that land drains to 22 right now. Uh -huh. Okay, it goes into the drainage systems and out uh, onto 22. We go to the development plan now. You'll see that I have two trunk lines of storm sewer. We're cutting that runoff off. Um, there used to be, I think it was like 45 acres of runoff going to that site. Uh, there's 15 now after we finish and get the design plan the way you're looking at it right here. Uh, we're proposing this as a water quality treatment because when we do the left turn lanes into, into the site, we need to shift the pavement on the, on the eastbound side of 22, and there it goes, it works, in this area right here. So what we're going to be doing is we're going to be moving that onto our site. We'll be dedicating land to DOT, and we're going to be moving it onto, onto the site. And by doing such, by introducing that and this little bit of pavement where the double left turn is, we've increased the impervious coverage than what was here before. But we've reduced totally in the runoff and volume what the drainage runoff was from the original site. So what we have to do is we have to provide a water quality feature, uh, which could be done either by a mechanical device or we could do it with um, this basin that we're proposing here. So as a, as a drainage basin, it's not it's intended to be water quality basin. Okay. Now if I could circle back a little bit and let's... Well, I was going to say the reason I asked this question is um, that portion of 22 has had historically poor drainage and we actually had some serious accidents there several years ago. Right in this stretch along Yeah, uh, and uh, you know, you had hydroplaning and so on on the highway and DOT came in, did some quick fixes. I don't know if it's a total fix. Well, and okay. evidently they're reviewing everything you're doing. Uh, from a drainage standpoint, yeah. you're doing that and you'll see, uh, you know, if you if you actually, I think it's, it's well, it's part of the drainage report. 
it shows you the pre-development runoff area that goes to 22 and basically what's happening is this line of storm pipe that we're putting in here is cutting off the whole site from draining in that direction so everything's going to go now it'll go back to this basin that we're proposing in Phillipsburg and that'll discharge into the creek from that basin as opposed to going the way it does now out onto 22 into whatever structures they have on 22 uh -huh. and then it goes actually it goes and then it goes across 22 and then it goes around the back and comes back under 22 so um, in addition to this basin during the construction of the temporary um, access point we have to build in this area right here and it shows on the DOT access plans that we're proposing in this area right here. We're putting in a small basin here to maintain the runoff and everything that's going to come from this so that we don't have an issue with that. And that would be attenuated and then directed to this basin, which at that point in time would be a sediment basin and a detention basin temporarily. After everything is done and we can clean this out and clean out this basin, that basin then becomes a bioretention basin or a storm filter basin. That's my drainage at this point. Okay. Um, other utilities. There is a 16 inch water main that runs along Route 22. It comes through the site on the northern end along with a gas line that's, that's coming through here. There were some questions in the, the uh, engineer's report. Uh, about its location in that and we will be out there uh, we have markers that show us where it is horizontally but we need to find out where it is vertically and once we know what we're doing with the site plan then we can go out there and uh, determine whether or not they can be left in their present location or they'd have to be uh, relocated and that would be the gas and the water in the, um, the northern end of the site we're proposing to tie into the 16 inch uh, main water main that's out in uh, 22. We'll be bringing a new main that'll basically run in the connector road from that point through the site uh, and back out um, uh, we'll traverse through the site on a connector road it will come through the road through the site this way uh, which will probably connect the road it goes behind building uh, two and then it would go into the intersection of Center Street and Roseberry Street uh, there's an existing I believe it's a 10 inch water main in that area we'll be tying it to that that gives us an interconnection from one end of the project to the other and then what will happen is out is these buildings come online the mains will be um, diverted to provide whatever uh, supply they need and we'll be looping them in and out through the site of Phillipsburg. We would also do the same thing um, for the warehousing uh, on Building 7 in Lepacon. Go back to the panel now that we've marked uh, A1. Um, as part of the requirements that all buildings are proposed to have be serviced by all utilities, uh, we put a utility bank running along the uh, connector road and in that utility bank would be all the common things like cable, TV, uh, the gas line would be in that general area uh, and then to the south of the retaining wall we are proposing to put a force main that would work with the <coughs> excuse me with the rec facilities The force main would come up the embankment run offset from the, 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 the connected road on the low to downhill side it would traverse next to that retaining wall and then where the retaining wall uh, is no longer needed to support grade, grade it's just about when you get into the, the Phillipsburg portion of the site we take that force main across the connector road and what it does at that point in time is building seven is on the downhill slope of what would be the gravity feed for the entire project. So what happens is when we come up from the Phillipsburg side up through the site, we're climbing the hill, but as soon as we get to just before the uh, township break, it's probably three or 400 feet before the township break, the grade falls off again. So by gravity, we cannot get building seven to 
the gravity line. So what we're proposing is that um, that I would get a new pointer. Um, that building seven would have an ejector pit or multiple ejector pits with a force main, and then that force main would be interconnected with the force main that comes from the connect from the recreation facilities, and couple of three, four hundred feet down onto the Phillipsburg site. And I'm gonna, it's building four. Um, it's probably, I'm sorry, probably a little bit more than that. But right in this area here is where the, the sanitary sewer functions on this site as gravity. Uh, so from the, again, I'm looking, sorry, I'm looking at panel four. Um, so if we looked at building four, it'd be a sanitary gravity manhole here. And the two force main, the, the two force mains, as they're combined, then would then be directed to that manhole, so that then everything on the site would be serviced by a, a public sewer. At that point, there wouldn't be a need for a septic or or that. Yeah, can I just stick two cents in there, sure. too, please? Um, that would have to be metered somehow, since we operate under an intermunicipal agreement with Peabird. And as far as the nature center goes, I don't know who's going to own that or what. We don't particularly want to have that taken out of our allocation. I don't think you're going to solve that tonight, but it's an issue that you're going to have to address before we implement the sewers on this thing. Do you follow me? Yeah, actually, Frank, just explain. I, I'm very familiar with the intermunicipal agreements for handling water and sewer. But in regard to the nature center, could you give me a little more detail? I wasn't following you on that. Well, that allocation is going to have to come from somewhere. Right. We have an allocation. Paver has an allocation. Who gets that waste subtracted from their allocation and who gets billed for it? Yeah, we do have to drill into that. No, no, that's all I'm all right. pointing out. We'll, right? we'll, we'll get in the weeds on that when the time comes, but thank you. Thank you, Mr. Brown. Okay. Uh, the next thing I wanted to discuss a little bit was the grading that we were talking about before. Um, you can see that these little triangles that are on here, they represent um, contours or one foot intervals. And you'll see that if you look at the plan on, on that you have in front of you. Again, there are sheets six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. Um, they start at elevation 345. They grade down to about 341. And what that is intended to do to give the ability that as this is here, um, prior to a building being constructed, that there is not intended to be any ponding, and that the, this runoff can get to the storm sewer facilities. Um, and to I'm looking to see if I can give you a height of retaining wall. Retaining wall in this area right here is about eight or nine feet. It's not quite as tall as, as we had, uh, as I had envisioned. We actually did push this down a little bit, and the upper walls are um, about ten or twelve feet. So. Um, what happens now with the runoff from the site is obviously we have everything draining to these pipes here. Uh, the road network is split right about here, this, in this portion here, which is, uh, I'll call it the midpoint of, of the lot. This runoff drains back towards um, Route 22. It's cut off right in this area here so that it comes back into the site. The balance of this and this is handled by the differential between what we had uh, pre-development going to Route 22 and what we have there now. Uh, and I fortunately don't remember the numbers from the drainage report, but it's a substantial decrease in the amount of runoff that we're proposing there. And uh, I think that's kind of where. Let's see if there's any any questions on. There was a lot of information given out on those couple sheets, so we'll just make sure there's no other questions from planning board members or the public on what you just said and then we can move on to the next topic. I have a question. Can I ask a question? Okay. 
Yes. Yes. So, just identify yourself, please. Uh, Gail Denice. I own the property across the street at 1011 Route 22. So I'm just trying to visualize the building and this connector road. So if you can put up panel A1 for me. This That's is it? Okay. All right. So at first you said that the connector road was 18 feet high, but now you've changed it to say... You think so, it's 12 feet at the midway point. Right, right? right in here. I, I did not have this panel in front of me, and okay. I was All right, we'll trying try. to remember. But right in that area there, the connector road, as it relates to the existing ground in this area over uh, here, uh -huh. will be uh, 12, eleva 18. elevated above 8 to 12 feet. Okay. So what about that S that goes out this to Route 22? How high is that road? That, that is that all elevated up? No, I, maybe uh, maybe I can help you envision a little bit. What happens when you come down Route 22? You're, uh, we were there earlier today. We're on the pavement, right? Right. I have to match that grade. I can't do anything to Route 22. I can't elevate it or anything. So I'm matching that grade. So what I'm doing is, is I'm pulling off of the highway. All right. We're staying relatively flat. Okay. All right, so we're going to pull into the site. We're going to go maybe 250 feet into the site, and that's when it starts to change like this. And as it makes this sweep, the road is going to start to elevate and climb to get up to this platform area. Okay, okay so we're going up like this. Yes. All right. Okay, so then my next question is, the foundation of that building, is that foundation, will that be at that 12-foot Elevation also, so then it begins, it's up off the road, 12 feet, and then the building? Or is your building down like in a valley, and then the road is built up? Right? So, so, this, so this road, all of this here is up 12 feet off of Route 22, right? Well, and yeah. then, so this building, does the foundation start up that high so then the building is going to be like this very tall lovely big okay. factory let, thing above let, 12 feet above Route 22 let me give you a, a little bit more of a view on it okay Route 22 as you come around the curve and you start to head east okay Route 22 starts to dive down Route 22 is right. a lot higher mm -hmm. if you were at the site today you'll notice that this portion of the site was lower than Route 22. The water drains around the corner to 22 here. Mm -hmm. This portion of the site up in here, which is the north corner of the site, this is all going to be excavated out. Excavated. Okay, mm -hmm. So it's going to be lower than 22 when it starts. As we pass just about where the entrance driveway here is, the platform is going to start to come out of the ground. So you're going to be... So it's you know, have to balance it between the north end of the building and the south end of the building as to how that building is going to be placed. So on one end of this, which is opposite where the the uh, Lock Street intersection is and and the, the new uh, traffic light, the building is going to be up or higher than the represented area to the north of it because the natural grade is higher on 22. 22 keeps going downhill as we pass the site. Okay. So, so, so you may not see as much of the building from the south end, the north end, the north end that you're going to see. It's going to be like this. Correct. Correct. Uh -huh. What is your elevation at Route 22 at your new proposed intersection and your slab elevation? The Route 22 grade is about elevation. 315, and I believe this finished floor elevation is around 344. That's 30 feet. 30 feet, yeah. How nice a building from there? Uh, I don't have the architecture, but I think we're permitted 50 feet. Or, yeah. So your building would begin from that 30 foot height and go 50 feet beyond it? So it would be 80 feet from the the lowest point there from the highway from, from the, the highway. highway but when you're looking at it you're going to see the road going up to it as it turns there's a retaining wall in front of it and then the building is back keeping in mind that this building is going to be set back um, 
200. About 200 feet from the from the site. And then your proposed was 700 trees along the front. Along the well, there 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 are plantings along here. We are. If you look at the contouring and stuff here, these are um, these contours in this area here. And I'll, I'll have to fault myself for because it was going to get really dirty and, and cloudy. These contours are five foot contours. So what we're proposing in here is that if we build a berm up at a long 22, okay, to shield as you come in around 22. When you look over, you'd have to look up to be able to see over it. Uh, the relationship, the top of this berm is at uh, 340 in this area. It fades off to about 335 as it comes further up. But at this end over here, and I'm talking the north end of the building now, uh, 22 is a lot higher than the building at that point. You're, you're up in the air there. This grade falls off onto the site. As we come past the area where the temporary road is, um, we're looking at a grade on 22 of uh, 324. And we're looking at a berm elevation of around uh, 335. So there's 10 foot grade change there. So we are making an attempt to try to shield, you know, some of the building off of 22. Obviously, a 50 foot building, I'm not going to be able to hide the whole thing. But we're putting the earthen berm there, and then we're intending to plant trees on it. And over time, the trees will grow, and you know, that's that's the intent. So okay, just one more question. Mm -hmm. This room here. How high is this road going to be? Because here we're 12, 18, 12. Right, so and then what? And you're, what you're, you're, uh, but it's the 12 has nothing to do that. What the 12 is is the relationship from the road to the existing ground. This okay. ground here. Uh -huh. okay. okay. All right. So if you, in other words, if you were standing down by the creek and you were able to look up through the woods, mm -hmm. when you hit that spot over there, you'd see between an eight or to, eight to twelve foot retaining wall. Mm -hmm. And how how long is that wall? It's this dark line right here on this side. So it's, it's the one it's wall. A it continues. This, yeah. this, 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 this is the end of it on this uh -huh. side, and this right here is the retaining wall that's part of this this project. Okay. So. So approximately that makes the elevation of the new connector road about 20 feet higher than the intersection with Route 22. The road goes up about 20 foot in elevation from the intersection to about the side of the building. Just guessing. Is that about right? 324 to the connector road at this point, at its highest point, is at 324, okay. where it connects is at 315, so you're about maybe 9 or 10 feet higher. Okay. You come through there. Okay. All right. The 10 or 12 foot dimension that has been discussed is the height of the retaining wall on the downhill side of the, of the what happens is as the road comes on to the project, the ground is falling off too fast. And I can't catch it. And I don't want to be down that low, so what we do is we raise it up by putting the retaining wall in. Okay, uh, another question out there. Um, <clears throat> my name is John Betts. I live at 225 Red School Lane, apartment Y14. I'm very concerned about the, the availability of pedestrian passage to the um, recreation area. I'm concerned about Sycamore Landings uh, access to that area and what the people would do if they reversed they came back back west on the eastbound side on foot um, I'm concerned about the metering of the sewages those are just my concerns I, I don't have any questions but those are major concerns of mine that should be addressed more fully before um, anything gets done thank you because right here, see, you're talking about, you're talking about, uh, we're 20, you're talking about Sycamore Landing, um, someplace up in this area. Six, that's okay, that, that right new here. apartment complex? Right, yeah, that's so not, that, not full yet. Well, that's right. going to add to the roadway. The creek is way over here. You're right. It's on the other side of the creek. Right, okay. But it's really not that far for walking because I've walked. I have, have been known to walk. Um, uh, where is this? Let's see, was that bridge? Is where we are. I've been able to walk all the way from here under, the cup, under that little cup, under that little bridge, 
down here, over here, all the way up here, to go close for more. So what I'm saying is it's not going to stop the desire for somebody to get from Sycamore Landing, a kid or somebody that would want to get from there over to, say, the other side of the other side of the small property. Um, could happen. Um, sewage metering, that depends on who's going to be paying the taxes. And um, the height of this, the height of the wall system is also about 20 feet. That's quite a, quite a distance. Pedestrian passages, Paul Sturban said, um, should be looked into further. And that's all I have to say. And then the sewer metering. Uh, Brian Weeks, 208 South Seventh Street. Uh, my question is uh, about your uh, pump station for your sewer. Um, it's yours. You're going to maintain it for life of your your thing. It's, it's not, it's not going to be turned over to the town in ten years. Or? No, it's not intended to be a pump station. Okay, what it's a high pressure. Be, it'll, it'll be line. an injector system, and it will be part of for Building Seven. Okay. It's going to be part of their maintenance issues. Okay, it's, it's definitely 100% part of their maintenance. Yeah, it, it's their sewer line, and as it goes. Yeah. Okay. Brian, none of the infrastructure in this development is going to be owned by the town. Nothing. Nothing. Including, okay. this, including this pumping station for the Nature Center. All right, awesome. Thank, Thank you. you. Yeah, I think the only exception is in the Peabird Agreement uh, with the meter itself and the metering. There's some, <coughs> they have some jurisdiction over that. <coughs> <coughs> yeah, I know this gallon is allotments back and forth. So. I mean, I, they actually calibrate it, and I, I think they maintain it and so on. So We have another question. Yes. Yeah, I have all, uh, some questions and concerns regarding... I'm oh, sorry, my name is Maria Haddam. I live at um, 700 Lock Street, the old farm in the bend in the road. And lots of my neighbors use my driveway that comes off of Route 22. It's a very dangerous situation as a shortcut from behind the diner to Lock Street. And I allow that and with good blessings because they're my neighbors. But once we get a whole lot of people coming and going through here, I don't necessarily want to increase traffic through there. Um, it's a really dangerous way to get onto Route 22. True. So coming, my question is that coming from the east, heading west, where you're going to have your double lane turn traffic light, is there a... a is there going to be a left turn? There's not going to be a left turn. So they'd have to go into your area, figure out a way to turn around and turn. No, well, they're going to, they're going to make a left turn. They can't make a U-turn. I'm asking about that U-turn. Yeah, no, a okay. Complete left turn. I, I think I know where you're going. To go back. To go back. Yes. Okay, I think I know where you're going. All right. This is Lock Street as it exists today. Mm -hmm. All right, and I believe your house is in this area someplace it's in here. It's right in the bend. Yeah, okay, okay. right. Yeah, it's right. Uh, it's right in here, mm -hmm. and there's looks like there's a path that comes from Lock Street there's down to 22. There's a driveway from Route 22 between the barns and okay. yeah. So. Okay, what happens presently today is Lock Street comes down onto 22 on a really oblique reverse angle. Yeah, it's not that difficult to get out of. Well. It's, it's not safe. We'll put it that way. Okay. Okay, what we're proposing to do as part of this application is take that out. And we're going to rebuild it so it comes up into the connector road that we're proposing. So now people coming down Lock Street past your house can come up. They can come to this intersection, which is right here. Um, and what you, they'll be able to do is make a right turn here, come down the hill to the traffic light. Now, the traffic light, what gives them the option to do is now they can make a left if they wanted to, where they couldn't before, and they can make a right at a signalized intersection so they don't have to, right, to deal with it. Right, but they'll just cut through my driveway and try to... Well, I mean, that, that's, that's, that's not... Right that, into the busy yeah, spot. Yeah, that's... Because lots of people do it. Yeah, that's not something that I can control. It would be yeah, something you would have to control. Yeah, but more about the, the increase of traffic to this area and also that you've got a playground right in that corner of a very, very busy and dangerous curve in the road. I mean, it's like narrow. It's very dangerous. People can't sit up around it. People fly through it. So, you know, that playground area, I'm a little confused about why that's right there. 
and the walking trails and stuff like that. The other question I have about that particular part of it, I don't know if we're addressing that now or not, is who's going to police that to say, great, it's a great spot, you need a place for kids to play, but it doesn't want, I don't want to see it turn into a, a nighttime hangout or other things. So who's going to police those trails? Yeah, Mrs. Hendrick, I'm just going to cut in right now. Mm -hmm. that, that There's going to be a future site plan for the Nature Center. Okay. So it'll be a completely separate hearing. That's there's going to be separate. a separate set of plans. Okay. So That's just really my concerns. The discussion tonight. Because really, I'm just if we're just looking at the roads right now, I'm still concerned about the amount of traffic it's all going to bring to right across the street from my house where people. it's a very dangerous curve in the road. It's a dangerous way to get on Route 22 and, you know, People do use it. I'm not there to, you know, meter them. You know, okay. Understood. Okay. All right. Thanks. Thank you. Um, but we do appreciate the comment uh, as to the location of the entrance to the parking lot for the for the center. So we'll take a further look at that at the site plan. That's not a final location. It's just a proposed you know, what, what's going to be there. So there will be an entrance. There will be a parking area. So we'll look at moving the entrance and reconfiguring the parking area so it's not as close to that curb. So it's a little safer. So we appreciate your comment. Thank you. Can, can I hop in here and just build on, she triggered something in my mind. Um, two things, I, I recognize the Nature Center and the park and all that as a separate site plan. I, I raised the question, I don't know who asked for it or who owns it or do we even want that and I'll just leave that out there. Um, the second thing, I'm getting more confused again, we have a, a public road, Lock Street, tying into a private road, is that what we have? Yeah, th there was actually discussions, do we want to make the stretch of the connector road from Lock Street up to 22 a completely public road? Um, that can be done, we can discuss that further, and as a councilman we'd have to come to the council, and that we will need to come to the council as well on the on the relocation of Lock Street, the abandonment of the old right of way, the establishment of the new one. Um, I think, and again, we can discuss it further, uh, Councilman Pryor. Um, I, I think the proposition of having it be a private road in which Title 40, uh, all the motor vehicles are, are enforced, the township can enforce those, that will take care of regulation of the road. But again, we can discuss that further. That's just thoughts at this time. Yeah, and I don't have the solution. I just raised that as an institutional matter that I think we'd have to work out. Yeah, it's forward. something. But, but the, the, the subdivision plan shows the area of roadway between Realign Lock Street and Route 22 to be dedicated to the township. And I have put forth a comment indicating that that's something that needs to be changed. I don't think the township should take that section of roadway. That section of roadway is going to get battered by trucks and we're going to end up being responsible for repaving and improving that area. I think we can work out some agreement to yeah. allow the public to traverse that area from, from Lock Street without having... Yeah, I understand you guys. It's going to be a high maintenance road and, and do we really want that? But on the other hand, the people on Lock Street have access to 22, it's, it's public access and all of a sudden we dump them into a private road and who knows, uh, you know, things change. Uh, yeah, Mr. Private Carter, state, your, so. your points will take it and maybe, again, we will certainly, all of us, think about it further and, and, and nail it down in the future. Uh, we could certainly agree that the, um, we could create a, a right of way that would guarantee the public's right in the future to use the stretch of the connector road from Lock Street to 22 and then keep the maintenance on the development so that way we, we solidify in perpetuity the right of the public to access so some future owner couldn't say well we don't want the public anymore and then where the people on Lock Street go so that would be completely unfair and not anticipated so I, I understand exactly what you're saying and, and we'll think of some creative ways to make sure that's, that that that's protected. That's do exactly what you just said. Oh, okay. So yeah, there we go. Good, Straight yeah, minds so exactly. I like that solution. So we will, um, we'll work with everyone to make sure that that's taken care of. Thank you, Mr. Sturdy. Thank you. I, I can't remember um, from the last presentation. So we have a detention basin, but does it also handle the water quality, the issues with all the oils from the trucks and whatnot, as of before the water gets to La on Creek? I just can't remember. And I, I think we talked about it before, but... Can, um, Apologize. I had a panel that I used in Phillipsburg, and I probably should have brought it with me tonight. The basin itself is intended to do work as the water quality basin for the, the entire site. But what we are doing 
in addition to that, if we are proposing it, and I'm going to go, uh, I'm using this panel, which is sheet five, to show you the location of the detention basin, that this will be detention and water quality. Uh, you're concerned about oils and things like that. What we're proposing to do, and it would, it would work on these trunk lines here uh, on the uh, main sewer lines. What we're proposing to do is that every one of these connection points where it's strictly pavement, in other words, what we're going to do is take an inlet uh, off the back of this. We're going to have a sump that, not, not necessarily a sump, but parking lot will grade to that particular inlet. Inside the inlet would be a hood, and the hood is an oil separator. And what's intended to do is to act, do that, is have the oils and the, you know, the heavy uh, metal stuff float to the top, heavy metals would float to the bottom to give us like a second layer of uh, water quality. It's not required based on what we have as far as the size of the detention basin, but we were also concerned that, you know, because of the amount of pavement that we're going to hear, the trucks that we're going to have here, that we should have some other measure to help eliminate that portion of, you know, whether or not the oils are there. Additionally, in the, the um, uh, detention basin, we're proposing to put uh, spray fountains in there, and that will help dissipate some of that. Okay. Thank you. Do we have any other comments or questions from the public? Okay, we'll close public then for this slide. And uh, any other questions from planning board members on what we just heard? So, so that, yeah. That in an, I don't know if uh, you want us to roll right into the site plan. That, that is the, the essence of the uh, site plan portion of the application that we put before the board. The others is the preliminary site plan, which subdivision. subdivision. I'm sorry. Thank you for correcting right. me. Yeah, we're talking about which the site we can plan take for now. Before we start that next section, we'll take a five minute break oh, and then continue right after. Certainly. All right. Thank you. So, five minute recess. <laughs> Bring the meeting back to order. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, so we're going to uh, pick up our testimony and, and, and round out the um, site plan part of the application. We mentioned that there is a, a subdivision, uh, but um, during the break we discussed we should probably encapsulate the site plan. So at this point, we've, we've hit all the, the uh, testimony in chief. Uh, we do need to go through the uh, professional's report we have. For the record, the report from Mazer Engineering from Mr. Sturbins dated August 18, 2017. We have a report from the board planner from Mr. Ritter uh, dated August 17, 2017. I have Mr. McGrath address those. In general, we um, agree to uh, abide by the reports to the satisfaction of the two professionals. There's a few issues we just did want to discuss with the board, and I'm sure there'll be some questions from your professionals and the board. But as a general proposition, we're not going to go through every line and every comment. We're just going to hit the ones that we need to discuss. So, Mr. McGrath, I'll turn it over to you. Um, the technical comments of Paul's report, I was going to put Mr. Sturgeon's report first. Uh, those start on page six, I believe. Um, the pages prior to that were basically a summation, I believe, of what the history of the submissions have been over time. And you don't have any comments on that? It looked accurate. Yeah, okay. nothing to, to add to those or, or ask for changes on. Um, we were deemed complete uh, June 28th, and that's the June 28th meeting. Uh, and we have technical comments, and um, from the way it's enumerated here, anything that's in bold is a change or an addition uh, to what or, or addressing uh, the previous letter um, on the project. Um, first one is an advisory comment to the, to the planning board. Um, it says that uh, 
as planning and zoning issues of whether or not any relief is needed. That's just an advisory comment to the board that they should be aware of that. <coughs> we turn the page to page seven. We go on to the subdivision. Um, we had not submitted a revised subdivision plan at this point, and Mr. Sturbins uh, indicates that on this letter. The reason for that is because we were not 100% sure as to the placement of uh, the lot lines at this point between uh, how it's going to work with NJDOT and how the lots for the town itself uh, would be laid out. So we, we had put in a preliminary basically as a talking point uh, to get a discussion going. Uh, we did not bring it back tonight though. Um, Uh, site and dimensioning plan. So I guess the question is on phase two, are you going to address comments 2.01 through 2.09? I'm sorry, which page? Page. It's seven and eight. Are you, there's comments 2.01 through 2.09 on the subdivision plan. Are you going to address those comments? Uh, we will address those comments when we come back and we know okay. what the configurations are. We'll address. Okay. I have, a, I have a quick question. It, it's kind of relates to the uh, subdivision plan, which is also part of George's comments also. And just to educate myself, if we take this plot and subdivide it into three, I, I don't know if it was three or four lots, does that change the bulk requirements and you know the, the maximum building coverage and all those percentages that we had to meet that was on page three of George's letter. My, the, um, we'll further detail that when we come back with the revised subdivision pl um, plan. We'll, we'll provide a, a zoning table. <laughs> My best guess is that, that we do comply. The only thing that might not would be the lot that is the actual connector road. Um, may be deficient, but otherwise the other lots will essentially be the, the building lot, the the uh, open space lot from the connector road over, and then the connector road more or less. So we will again provide those further details so the both professionals can review it when we come back for second. Well, we said regarding great, thank those you. lots, the road lots was that you were to label those as non-building lots on the plans yeah. to address those. So yeah, we will definitely do that as well. Thank you. Great, thank you. No, so that, that would be up to 2.09. We go into site layout items, uh, comment item three. Um, items 301, 302, 303, um, and 306. Uh, we have no uh, comment or objection to providing. I believe that uh, 304 uh, and possibly 305 may require um, a little bit of comment on there, um, having to deal with the minimum center line radiuses. Um, we have revised the plan to in increase the center line radius of the intersecting radius at Lock Street, uh, and that was done based on my conversations that I had with Mr. Sturbins. Um, and then I see that you know we have a comment here about it. Uh, again, and what we're dealing with there is that we are looking to post this road, and I believe Mr. Carroll will address it a little more uh, in his testimony, but we're looking to post this road at a 25 mile an hour speed zone, and that Based on that criteria, and again, Mr. Kennel will address it, uh, I believe that uh, we can um, allow the site plan to operate the way we proposed it. Uh, and I, Mr. Kennel will, um, will bring that to. Uh, and then 305 is the site triangles that are proposed. Um, we did, although they are very small and hard to see on the plan, we did put a site triangle on the intersection of Lock Street and the Connector Road. Um, it would be labeled uh, on the subdivision plan when that you know comes to fruition. Uh, in addition to that, I believe we probably need to show him the site lines to show that 
um, the system or the layout of the roadways uh, will uh, be adequate. And again, I believe that uh, Mr. Kennel could also help address that comment. So if I can interrupt you for a second, I want to make sure we don't go through this too fast where we don't give the planning board members opportunities sure. to actually ask our professionals a question on some of the items. So you just went through um, 3.01 to 3.06. So I'll ask any uh, planning board members if they have any questions for our professionals or for you on those six items, and then we'll move on to the next one. Sure. So we're, we're going to break it up a little bit. Just so uh, we don't does it make more sense for you to go through these and, and explain your comments rather than the board would like I think the what, what we're trying to accomplish is, is the applicants agreement with making these plan revisions so as I understand it uh, Mr. Uh, McGrath is indicating he will advise the plan to address comments 3.01 3.02 3.05 3.06 3.06 really didn't need any action 3.03, I think he agreed in error because I think his client has taken a position that not, they don't want to put sidewalks. Um, That's correct. So I'm sorry. I think, you, I think you misspoke there. Um, I actually have waiver, no sidewalk, yeah. question mark. So, again, the board needs to look at that issue. I, I think sidewalk, me as your engineer, thinks that sidewalk should go in. Uh, in this development, I'll describe when the time's appropriate where I think it should go in. And I think George will also speak to that as well. Just on 3.04, I'm not troubled with a waiver for the center line radius on Rock Street. I think a 250 foot radius is fine, and I don't have a problem with the design waiver. I think th there needs to be some further testimony and some exhibits on the 185 foot radius for the connector road. That's well short of the 500 foot radius requirement. Um, the big issue with the connector road is we're going to have truck, truck traffic on that road on a regular basis and we want to make sure that uh, the trucks are going to be able to maneuver within that type of radius and stay in line and not encroach in other travel lanes. And I, think, I certainly think the 25 mile an hour speed limit that has been agreed to and, and proposed through some of the um, work sessions we've had, Mr. McGrath and I, and through some of the plan revisions is, is a good step in that direction. I could also provide you with uh, turning maneuvers. Yeah, we were looking actually for a, for an exhibit showing, you know, simulating how a truck would move in a westbound direction through, you know, through the inside of that curve. Um, maybe Mr. Kennel has that exhibit tonight, or maybe it can be brought to next week's meeting to uh, address that issue. So that's really a summary of 3.01 through 3.06. Um, we're going to we're going to revisit 3.03 later, Paul, as you just said. Right. But I do have a question on 3.06. Is is that accurate? We have a maximum height of 26 feet for a retaining wall. And I thought that we were shorter. Um, that's been that's been changed since that was the original comment. There's been some adjustments made to Mr. McGrath's plan. Okay. And that's no longer the maximum height. And um, actually. Um, after the initial review letter was issued, we looked at the way the ordinance is written, and there actually isn't uh, a setback requirement for an individual lot. There's just an overall setback to Route 22 and the retaining walls that are on this uh, building lot with a 950,000 square foot high cube warehouse or beyond 150 foot setback from Route 22. So That's it's no longer an issue. Right, and that was referring to the wall on the south side of the building, not the one at the northwest corner. Yeah, correct. correct. Okay. Totally correct. Okay. Along the roadway. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Um, I did have a question on 305 to go back to. I'm not sure I understood Mr. McGrath's um, explanation. If, the, if these were roads to be dedicated, we the township would get the easements and we'd have the right to clear the site triangles and so on. Who's getting easements here? No one? Or who would the easement be granted to? The, the applicant owns all the lots. That's, that's to... Um, it would be from the applicant to the applicant, but what it yeah, does... Right, that's it, what I'm getting it, at. it creates in the chain of title in the future should someone want to change something on the site, they know they cannot build within that area because that's now a site triangle. So it, it kind of memorializes it. It's really more of a deed restriction than an easement. It just... 
I mean, if we can want to change yeah, it. I'll let the lawyers work that. So. <laughs> it has the same net effect, but yeah. your point's well taken, Mr. Pryor. Okay, so no further comments on 301 to 306. We'll move on to the next ones then. Okay. Um, 307, um, we would be providing um, stabilization for uh, the area that would be under um, construction for the new building pads, as we see on Exhibit uh, A1. Um, the exception I would take is uh, the placement of topsoil on the graded areas. We're talking, uh, you know, five inches of topsoil over a 45-acre piece of property here that equates to about 30,000 yards of material that would be placed for a very short period of time would have to be pulled off, stockpiled, and removed. And so our indication here that we're proposing the temporary seed base um, for that purpose, just to be a temporary seed base, and that uh, we would like not to have to put that five inches of topsoil in place because of the, you know, it really it's going to it's going to be put down, and it's going to have to be removed almost immediately as soon as the site is good. It just just to explain to the board, the initial comment was, what is the cover going to be? So if they came back and said it was gravel, that would have been fine for us. They just needed to label gravel. We were told that it was going to be topsoil and, and seed. And typically, you, you know, you, you would put a four to five inch thick, thick layer of topsoil on. So that, that's what precipitated this comment. We were told that that's what was going to happen. And, you know, typically you would do this. Uh, I'm sorry, Mr. Sorry, Mr. Sorry. wants to reevaluate the, the, the I have a question for Paul. Sure. Yeah, I didn't mean to cut you off. No, it's already done. I'm done. I mean, he's going to have to get his soil erosion sediment treatation uh, control plan certified, right? Yes. And right. what are they going to approve? Are we asking for something more than they would ask for? No. Again, if he wants to, if he wants to provide gravel where the building pad is, I don't think we might. We just asked. And the soil the conservation way. district would approve that. Yeah. Yeah. We'll, we'll provide the verbiage that would be required for the area is, is, and, and work out that detail with you. Is, is there a definition on, on temporary? If, if you do it um, on a temporary basis and something happens and four years, you're not doing something for four years, are we no longer temporary? So is there going to be a stipulation there on is, the time? In, in, the soil, in, in the soil conservation districts, uh, if, the, if the land is left for a period of time, the temporary um, seed or temporary stability has to be placed. If it's left for a longer period of time, then it has to be permanently. So you have to be within the constraints of the temporary definition. The soil conservation district. Okay. <coughs> okay. Uh, 3.8 has indicated that it was satisfied. Um, Three um, nine, we have uh, that we would agree to this. Uh, I believe it's the uh, signal or the signage out on Route 22 uh, that was discussed here, and that we will. Uh, if that's not the case, then the signage will be pro uh, provided as to what is required. The issue we're dealing with here is we have two sets of plans that we have working on. One that goes to DOT for their approval, and that shows certain information. And then our plans, which is the site plan portion of it, that shows other information. Uh, I think it just got missed in passing. We will provide that information. Um, temporary access is the next one, 310. Uh, it says it's satisfied. Uh, <coughs> We go to 311. Uh, this indicated that it's a continuing comment, and it was looking for um, testimony on uh, what the purpose was and how you know how these things were going to be uh, uh, input. Uh, I believe I touched on it briefly uh, earlier when I explained how uh, the temporary roadway was going to be installed, and then. Um, Immediately after the signalized, in, excuse me, the signalized intersection has been approved by uh, DOT, um, you know, of its construction and, and the like, uh, the temporary road would be taken out of uh, service. The temporary detention basin would be taken out of service, 
and the secondary uh, basin that would be in the center of or adjacent to 22 would then be converted um, to the water quality feature. Uh, I believe that kind of does a Reader's Digest version of that portion of it, and it, it asks for testimony and that. What about C and E? C and E, I think you need to address real fast. Right, we haven't talked about the C, I agree. Well, C, the duration of the roadway actually is driven by when the Route 22 uh, intersection comes online. We're anticipating that it shouldn't take any more than a year once we start. 14. Yeah, 12 to 14 months to construct the intersection. I'm talking, you know, the actual signalized intersection, so at that point in time, uh, that would be there. For 12 to 14 months after DOT approval. Correct. Uh, e, um, it's our anticipation at this point in time that this is a major project, and there's, you know, it's it, uh, there's a huge area they're going to be working on at the same time. Site contractors will be looking to develop certain areas. I'm sure there's going to be staging areas. We do not have a construction staging plan to give you at this point. What we're trying to do as part of this temporary is basically be able to get that construction equipment off of Route 22 and onto the site at this point. Uh, when the actual contractor comes on site, he's going to have to uh, develop you know, his staging areas and how it's going to work because of the amount of earthwork and that that needs to be done on the site. So I think what you do is you add a note to your soil conservation district plan indicating that there are going to be staging areas and at the final location of those staging areas will be determined in consultation with the soil conservation district and the township engineer and that will resolve the issue. Just put a note to that effect. Okay. And we're resolved prior to construction. Okay. So, Paul, we're at this point. I would say then we're we're satisfied that 3.11 has been addressed with the yes. testimony tonight. Yes. Okay. Um, grading and utilities uh, partially satisfied was 401. Uh, I believe uh, that. Again, like I mentioned before, uh, there are two sets of plans. I believe that the stationing for the um, Road A and Lock Street was missed on um, one of the other plan sets, and that will be uh, taken care of. Um, 402 has to deal with the um, grading blowups and details provided for the uh, PROWAG uh, requirements for the ADA. Uh, requirements. The plans that were submitted to NJDOT showed the intersection improvements uh, and they showed crosswalks that's required as part of what DOT on any intersection that you construct now. Uh, and those details, I believe, are not up to the current PROAG. Those details will be changed. Uh, storm sewer profiles uh, partially satisfied. Um, so real quick, so the 4.02 you're agreeing to? Yes, 4.02 to incorporate that. Yes, 4.03 okay. we're also going to agree to. The reason it was done the way uh, it's presented tonight is the question was in the little pack on portion of the site, and what we tried to do is be able to get the plans back to you as quick as we could. And it meant, you know, maybe another day or two, and we probably we would not have met the deadline that I needed to get the plans in. So that will also be taken care of. Uh, Four point oh four partially satisfied. See comments for specifics. Um, these have to deal with um, again. These are details that uh, we are dealing with grading and utilities, and that would be specific to the two um, I'll call them detention basins for, for <coughs> talking purposes here. Um, the emergency spillway details, the low flow channels which were not provided, the planting details and seed mix, and the embankment spillway stabilization measures um, and under drain layouts, those are being worked out at this point. Uh, we had soils work provided to us and it provided us with um, 
the information that we needed to be able to develop these these uh, plans, and these plans have to be and have to be approved, presented to, and approved by NJDOT first. Then we get NG, then we need to get DEP approval, and simultaneous to that, we would need to be able to get uh, township approvals. Uh, we are going to provide all this information um, as part of our, our next submission of a full set of plans, providing that we get the input we need back from DOT at that time. 405 says that it's been um, satisfied. Uh, 406 uh, says that there should be a minimum drop across the drainage structures of 0.1 uh, <coughs> foot. And, you know, it's a tenth of a foot. Uh, some of our drainage runs are over 2,000 feet long, and there's as many as 20 structures through there. So if we do the math through that, if I add a tenth to every one of those as we go down the line, when I get to the end, I'm going to be two or three feet deeper than I need to be um, at that. So I'm looking to see if we can, we can have relief on that. Uh, typically, when we dimension our, our structures, they're from center liner structure to center liner structure, and that gives you the proposed, uh, the invert through the structure itself. Uh, it doesn't give you the tenth, but it does give you uh, relief through the structure to provide positive drainage. The tenth typically we provide uh, in our office is for when we're doing a sanitary sewer manhole, you want to make sure that any of the liquids and solids continue through a manhole, so we do, we do propose it there. So we would be looking for um, that comment, um, for relief on that comment. We'll take a look at it with Mr. McGrath. Okay. Thank you. We'll take a look at it. With him. Okay. Yeah. Thank you, Paul. Uh, 4.07, uh, we did provide the drawdown calculations, and we will make the appropriate changes to the other documents. Uh, 4.08, oh, excuse me, 4.08 has been satisfied. Uh, 4.09 has been satisfied. Uh, 4.10. Um, so the comment indicates that this has not been provided. Uh, what we did on the plan was we provided, um, doesn't necessarily show that well on the Lapacon plan because we don't have an actual sewer connection here, but we, we do show our stubs for the water. Uh, I'm not sure if this comment also intended to mean that we need to provide stubs for um, the electric, the gas, the cable TV, and the like to be brought onto this, this pad for future construction. Uh, didn't show it at this point in time because we didn't know where the connection is. And all of these utilities are not across the street. They're on the project side. So the connections would be easily made without disturbing the, the uh, pavement section. And on the plan, there is a water main stub shown in the driveway here for the connection. And as I explained before, I'm, at that, I'm on A1. I explained before that there will be a place outside the road right away for the connection of the force main from uh, Building 7. So um, on, on that comment, I did, if it were the, just the, you know, like sewer, not, excuse me, the electric, uh, gas, things like that, uh, we can provide a footprint. Uh, we just don't know the exact location that they find. We just show schematic, uh, I guess, stub for these other utilities and okay. just indicate that it's tentative and that the final location will be determined through the prior construction or the, during the time that the site plan is provided for the building. Uh, 411 uh, has to do with grading uh, in a, two particular areas on the site, and we will um, we will make those changes uh, after discussing it with uh, your engineer in more detail, so that we know exactly what we need to do there to satisfy that comment. Um, 412 was satisfied, 413 partially satisfied, um, 
Um, and the 413, I believe I referenced before that the location of the existing, and I'll use A1 again, the existing uh, water and gas lines that traverse the north end of the site. We have the horizontal location at this point in time, but we don't have our Correct. test bits on them to give me the vertical to find out if we need to, you know, if they can stay in their actual location or they, they would need to be revised. Um, we would be looking to, to try to do that um, as part of the uh, site plan actually for building seven when we come back and so we'll have a better sense as to the actual grades that we're going to have at that point. Okay. I guess the, the reason why we have this comment is that your grading was being shown over, over that area. That's a large cut. So are you going to just, are you going to cut back the grading and leave that area alone? I believe we put a note on the site plan. It's not on that plan, but uh, I, there should have been a note placed on it that field verification of the depths would be done prior to. And that, that would be, you know, my preferred way of doing it at this point if we're working with the past. Yeah. Okay. Um, and I'm not seeing anything like that on the plan. It would be, I think, the least of the It's not six and Uh, yeah, there is a note about the water main. Approximate location of existing water main is a field verified condition to be didn't mention anything about verifying the, uh, the the depth of the line okay. to see if it would would be uncovered based on your grading design. Yeah, well, we'll, we'll I'll, I'll supplement the note and you know expand it so that it covers both the gas, the water, okay. and horizontal and vertical location. Thank you. Right, and site plan will have to accommodate whatever. I, I have a quick question there. Would, would Aqua be designing the water lines, or would you be designing them? What will happen there is we would go through have our design and we have to present it to them and then they are going to uh, you know, hopefully approve it as to the relocation. That 16 inch line that comes through there right now was intended just to service the project as it existed before. Uh, I believe it's dormant now. Um, and it, that it's been shut off, not you know, closed off, I mean, maybe water in the line itself. Mm -hmm. It's our intent that if we can use it where it is, we're going to bring it to the site. To, if it can't so they they review and approve your design, and then uh, you would you would do the construction, and they would provide some inspection. Or are you uh, going to own these I'm lines on site, or is Aqua? I, honestly, I'm not sure what the, the outcome of that that would be, whether or not they do the actual construction of it. I know I need to once once we're done here that these plans go back to them, and they have to approve them. Yeah, I, I just bring that up because sometimes you have to leave something to the water company in the end, depending on what the arrangement is. I was just informed that we're, we are responsible for the build, but they will be doing the inspection. They are. Uh -huh. Okay. Right. Uh, note uh, 414, uh, again, we would agree to make the changes that are required there. We'd have to meet with, uh, that has to deal with grading along a, a particular uh, retaining wall. And we would be making those changes. We just need to know exactly where they are. Uh, note 15 has to do with utility poles, fire hydrants, and the like out along um, Route 22 and how they're labeled to be uh, either remain or relocated or totally removed. Um, again, there's two sets of plans. Some of it shows on one set, some of it shows on the other. Um, we will have these plans uh, coordinated and I also would like to have the opportunity to discuss this um, with Mr. Sturbins because of 
uh, some information that he, he has found in the field and we have not been able to, to locate. I've sent my crew out there twice. So um, once that information is, is, is uh, obtained, the proper notes will be shown on the plans. Uh, again, that's the same similar uh, comment under uh, uh, 16. Um, you know, we would be labeling it properly on, on the plans. Uh, note uh, 417 has to deal with uh, it was partially uh, satisfied. Uh, there's an area, I'm going to A1 again, where Lock Street uh, makes the bend and then it starts to continue uh, along the property line behind the, the diner on 22. Uh, they asked us to extend the guide rail, I think it's about 160 feet. Uh, we're, the revised plans will have that uh, shown there. Yeah, just so the board is aware, uh, above the diner, the, the uh, Lock Street improvements are going to involve a slight widening of the pavement, and it's very steep there to begin with. There is actually a post and cable guide rail already right now uh, that is not in good condition. So Mr. McGrath actually is showing um, new guide rail where we asked, but it just needs to be continued a little bit to the this would be to the uh, to the east here to get the rest of the post and cable guide rail. That's <coughs> at this point. So we're almost there. And that's why uh, the guide rail is being. And then we'll okay. also add the requested details for the end treatments right. as to how they're going to be done. Uh, 418 was satisfied. Well, are we getting rid of all the post and cable guide rail, or just the part that's in bad shape? All of it. Okay. Yeah, we're, we're, just showing new, we're showing new guide rail from where I guess it starts. The poster rail starts now. Okay. Sure. It comes towards our project. That'll all be coming out. Okay. Yeah. He's putting more guide rail in because it's needed because of the widening of the road. And in addition to that, he's they're going to be replacing the post and cable guide rail. That's beyond that point. Okay. It's good. In bad shape and not conforming. Excellent. Um. That was, okay, uh, four, 418 uh, was satisfied, uh, 419 uh, was satisfied, 420. Um, the minimum slope we're proposing here, again, has to go back to what I was talking about and the amount of distance that we travel on the site. Uh, to provide, um, give you an idea, we're proposing a 1% slope. And that's in the areas of where the pad ready grading is intended to be. Um, Two percent would be typical, like if you were doing housing subdivision and you wanted to get the water to move away from the buildings or in between the buildings. We're proposing one percent here um, for, a number, for, two, for two reasons, really. One, to minimize the amount of dirt that has to be moved later on. Um, the contouring that you see there, those are one foot interval, intervals and they're about approximately 100 feet apart. If we go two foot, uh, the, for every 100 feet that you see there, then we're, we're going to have to have two more contours or graded up higher. It means more material that would have to be shuffled around later when we actually go to do the site plan. The 2% is going to give it the ability to flow a little bit better than we really don't want it to at this point. But the 1% should give it the ability to be able to stay dry so that the material could be. Yeah. I think we just need some clarification on the note. I think, uh, you know, you're talking about the sawtoothing of the grades where the pad site's going to be. And Correct. I would agree because that area is eventually going to be a parking lot. That uh, and building and, and one percent is acceptable in a parking lot as far as drainage goes. Right. So I, get, I think that the, your no twenty is going to be uh, okay. Understood. Be some okay. The verb maybe there. the verbiage and it should yeah. be trained and changed. Then okay. I think we're good. Um. Note uh, 21 has to deal with the existence of monitoring wells on the site. Uh, it's my understanding that the, that 
our environmental consultants are in uh, conversation with DEP and that they are looking to have uh, the majority of them uh, removed or closed as they as they be uh, and that uh, that information will be provided to you uh, as it becomes available to us um, pretty much yeah. Yeah. All, all that information has gone to DEP already. We just need to get their response, and then we'll be able to tell you. Um, we'll provide you with that information. All right. Um, Note four or comment 422 has to deal with um, closed depressions on the site. Uh, they are at the localized low points, I believe you were talking about, uh, Paul. Um, I had submitted a report from our soils engineer indicating that they were not uh, sinkholes, and that's a comment further on. Uh, we are we're also we're in agreement with, with the report that was submitted, and okay. we said that in. Section six of the yeah, report. The, this this comment had to deal with how it how it's reflected this on the drainage calculations, the drainage calculations. The existing conditions. And I would I would um, like to meet with you to discuss how you know what the, the impacts are. Okay. Thank you. Uh, Four twenty three is an advisory comment. Um, Applicant engineer, uh, post development storm sewer flows collected the pipeways 22 and proposed basin of the town of Phillipsburg. That's just a comment to let you know that everything, mostly everything from here, is draining to Phillipsburg. I have an agreement. With, uh, I did have a discussion on this development with the Phillipsburg engineer, noting that the wet basin is in Phillipsburg. And what came out of that was that the town of Phillipsburg is going to be taking the lead on the um, on the review of that particular drainage facility. We'll be looking at all the piping, and we have been looking at all the piping going to that because that's in Wapak on Township. All right. Um, again, note uh, 424. Uh, there are substantial grade breaks on a lot of these uh, utilities that we're proposing down uh, downhill. Uh, the comment says that it has not been satisfied at this point. Um, the details that are requested here, uh, we're going to change on our on our site plan. But we're also proposing that uh, prior to uh, ordering any of these structures, that design calculations and shop drawings will be provided. Um, for review by the by the engineers that they're um, meet the standards that he's looking for. I think it's a very simple change. It's a note, and you just got to change the class of a gun. Yeah, I said the details will be changed, but it will also provide you with the shop drawing. Um, Four twenty-five satisfied. Twenty-six has been satisfied. 27 has been satisfied. 28 has been satisfied. Um, 429 has been satisfied. 430 is having to deal with uh, the buyer retention construction, the final construction, the temporary access improvements in that. Uh, it was partially satisfied. The engineer should indicate the buyer retention basin is to be constructed in its final configuration after the temporary access has been eliminated. I think I presented that in testimony, and what we, we would do is, uh, as recommended in the soil erosion notes, we would indicate that that's going to happen and um, maybe enumerated also in the general notes. So that well, shouldn't, I guess. Isn't there really two plans for that facility? There's a plan in its temporary condition and then a, a, a permanent a plan for its permanency. So, That's correct. So my understanding is that there's one view right now. There isn't two views. I don't know if I'm, mis I'm mistaken, but that's my understanding. Uh, I, I, I can interject. Uh, yeah. So the details, we just need a temporary detail for the sediment, base, sediment basin condition and then for the fire retention condition. And the BMP manual uh, requires that permanent condition, uh, sorry, 
temporary condition not be constructed to final grade, you can prevent any kind of sedimentation issues in the final condition. Right. We, we, would, we, would, yeah, we can talk about that, but we would continue with also indicating that the base needs to be cleaned, desilted, and everything prior to sure. final doing should be constructed. Correct. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I believe the 431 was part of a, a plan set and calculation that was provided by Mental Engineering, and I will have them provide the uh, requested details. Uh, 432, it appears that we A and B have been satisfied. <coughs> D and E have been satisfied, uh, and that uh, for inlet or C in the 43 to flare in section 44, uh, again, we'll look at that, and if need be, we can discuss it at the meeting uh, that we're proposing uh, with your engineer. But we should be able to say yes to the comment. Uh, I believe 433 uh, on to 441 are uh, new comments that came as part of the last submission. And um, 433, the outlet control structure must be provided. Um, we will provide that. Uh, temporary basin along 22 uh, will effectively function as a sediment basin. They should be designed to the riser. This is similar to the comment that we just discussed. And yes, we will provide that information. Uh, provide cross-section narrow description of biodetention, uh, <coughs> indicate the intent of the uh, construction, sand filter, and the like. All that information will be provided, and we will discuss it uh, with your engineer. Uh, separate cross-section should be provided for the two temporary basins and permanent water quality basins. Uh, that's on two separate plans, but yes, that information will be provided. Uh, locations and, and layout, the multiple under drains proposed for the bio basin um, must be clarified. The detailing will be provided in our next submission. Cleanouts will be provided as uh, requested. Uh, that's 438 that I'm on. 439 detailed cross sections of the bios uh, information. Uh, a through D. Um, this information will be provided, and I will I would recommend that I discuss it with your engineer to make sure it meets his. Uh, for I think 440 and 441 are, are basically the same. We're, we're going to we'll provide this information and we would, um, Provide it to your engineer prior to the next, well, not the next meeting, but we'll provide it to your engineer, engineer for his review. Uh, we're moving on to landscaping and lighting for preliminary pad ready site plan 501. It's been satisfied. 502, partially satisfied. Um, we'll provide the manufacturer's details and a point-to-point -point distribution uh, on the lighting uh, configuration. Uh, 503 has to do with the uh, numbers and, si and distribution of the 700 trees um, as far as the buffering requirements. I believe there's a similar comment in the planner's report, and I would, um, at this point, like to discuss with both your planner and engineer as to what their, you know, their particulars are that they're looking for on on that, and you know how we can address this item because um, they're similar but exactly not the same. The two comments, so I want to make sure that we we work for the same. Maybe Mr. Rigger can come to my office when we meet to go over that aspect of it. I would appreciate that. So, that would be great. Sure. In fact, maybe to perhaps move this along, maybe 
there's an agreement maybe to meet to discuss all the landscaping, which is pretty much takes up all of all of five. part five of my letter. So, yeah. Okay. Um, the geotechnical uh, report. Um, just real quick, there, were there any comments on any of the landscaping by board members? Okay, go ahead with uh, section six. Okay, thank you. Uh, geotechnical um, issues. Uh, report. To, uh, Mr. Sturbins and I had a minor comment or conversation before about uh, providing additional uh, soils information and how it relates to the current site plan. Um, we will contact our soils engineer and provide this information to him. <coughs> and I believe um, 602 having to deal with uh, grading and utility designs. Uh, 601 through 603 are essentially the same issue. The same issue, and they would be addressed in a, a, a future report. 604, you mentioned that you, you did do some soil explorations where the detention basins are near Route 22. Um, I did not see that, so I apologize. We'll take a look at that um, in your next round of, uh, or as part of your, your next round of revisions. So uh, we'll take a look at that now. I'm assuming was there permeability? Was there permeability test done? Uh, there were permeability tests done. There's no groundwater that we need to deal with, so there, you know, issues were good. The only issue that we were for those two areas, uh, the bioretention one would have a liner in it, so the permeability would not be an issue. We're putting a liner in it because of the cars. Cars. Okay. <coughs> Um, 605, I believe that that was addressed based on that report that was submitted. Uh, 606 was taken care of, similar to 605. Um, 607 is a traffic impact analysis. I think I'll skip that and allow our traffic engineer to, uh, to address those. Um, Miscellaneous is where we're at now. Uh, 801 roadway utility profiles. Uh, we are providing all that information on the profiles, uh, and they will be uh, in our next submission and all the revisions that we're proposing. Uh, the curb detail. Uh, 802, the curb detail will be uh, revised. Um, 803 has to deal with the configuration of the whether or not we provide uh, internal drop connections for uh, the sanitary manholes. Um, all of the sanitary manholes are in the Phillipsburg portion of the project, and the, t the engineer there had not commented on this. I would look to see that. I would, I would draw the comment. If, if there's nothing in the we'll pack on, then I, I don't really care. It's up to Stan Shrek to resolve that. Uh, 804 is satisfied. Uh, 805. Um, Uh, the detail for the terminal ends of the, the guide rails will be provided. And if there's any grading adjustments, those will also be uh, provided. The trench details and the, the, the clean stone, the choke and that, uh, we will address these comments, but I also would like to discuss these with our soils engineers so that we get their, their input. Uh, and that could be also discussed at our meeting that uh, we're proposing. The change to the detail on uh, 807 uh, to 40 mil, um, we have no problem with. Uh, 808. Um, 
having to deal with the uh, earthwork quantities that uh, are on this uh, this particular site. Um, there is anticipated approximately 130,000 yards of material will be removed from the site and utilized in Phillipsburg. Um, and topsoil is going to be, you know, it's obviously it'll be scraped. Uh, we anticipated getting a little bit more topsoil off of this site as it's a farm field at this point in time. And that will be distributed um, either through the areas that are going to be landscaped uh, at the site and also can be used for the berms that are required along Route 22. And then we soil taken. Um, it's not intended that, uh, let's see whether there are any contaminated soils to pack on at this time. Um, with reference to F, it's my understanding that there is a, it has to do with contaminated soils. There is uh, a, a in low pack. Uh, it has to deal with this area right here, uh, which is where the monitoring wells are. That's all part of what we're dealing with with the DEP at this point in time. And when we have that information, and it's a groundwater plume that's pretty deep on the site. I guess we're talking about soils. Are there any contaminated soils? The soils itself, no. They are knowledge there is none. The, so the surface soils that are going to be excavated. There's no issues with pesticides on the site with the, uh, with the farm field there? Not that I know of. I mean, Just got a news flash. <laughs> uh, apparently, the soil has been tested, and there's no there's no issues with it for pesticides, herbicides, or, or, or whatever. And that the elm apple that we were talking about is between 90 and 140 something feet down. So we're not going to be near that. And G, uh, there is no soil coming from Phillipsburg on this site. Actually, the Lapacon is going to Phillipsburg to create that site plan. Thank you. Uh, moving on to 809 has been satisfied. 810 has been satisfied. Um, 811 has been partially satisfied. It has to do with the asphalt um, driveway apron um, on for the temporary access. That information will be provided on the next submission. And then I think we're at uh, approvals, fees, and guarantees. You're just on uh, 8.12. I mean, it's I'm sorry. You talked about the waiver for the center line radius on Lock Street. We should note that you're requesting a design waiver. I don't know if there's any variances being requested. I don't think so, but if there were. I don't, I don't think we, you know, I think all the issues that we thought we had are gone. So. Okay. okay. Either Europe or Scotland. Yeah, on the, in the section 9.0, um, those are generally outside agency um, approvals. Uh, the only one I would want to talk about is F um, regarding the uh, maintenance of the detention basins. I don't know if um, <coughs> LOPACON requires council approval of that as well. It's a requirement of. Uh, it's a requirement in the ordinance, right? And, and that requirement is a result of our municipal stormwater permit with the state of New Jersey. So you have to have an instrument that provides for that maintenance. Actually, the DEP is getting very strict on that. Yeah, I'm aware, and that's why I'm wondering: do we need to have it? Um, 
that it's an agreement with the township, and then we need to go to the council for council approval, aside from your and Mr. Um, Spasaro's review. Whatever it is, we'll accommodate. Just, just want to make sure we have. If we go to council, it's, it's, it's something that Mr. Spasaro and I okay. would review and approve. We have a certain form that we've seen approved in prior projects. Okay. That we can give to you. And Perfect. Mr. McGrath's maintenance schedule will be in appendix to that. to that. And I would describe the type of maintenance that would typically occur in these facilities moving forward, the frequency of that maintenance. Okay, great. If you provide me with the form, I'll fill it out and then submit it for your final review and approval. And then item G, there is already a redeveloper agreement uh, in place with the town that was uh, signed in December of 2015. Um, and then the other comments are um, we, we agreed to and their, their standard conditions of approval. Um, I think, yeah, why don't, why don't we finish uh, all the reports and we'll bring Mr. Uh, Kennel up. So why don't we address the planning report to you? This is the, Mr. Kennel, is the traffic? Traffic, yes. I, I think what we're going to do is um, the traffic's going to be a very lengthy discussion and we want time for public comment at the end of the meeting. So I think we're going to postpone our traffic until the next meeting, but we can address some of the other issues and maybe talk more about the sidewalk while we have everybody here, which we wanted to revisit as well. Okay. Um, I have a copy of Mr. Ritter's report dated August 17, 2017. Um, the first two and, a, two and a half pages, I believe, were just you know Perfect. explaining the project and, and that, and then we start on page three for review comments. Um, the reference to lot one, block 100, that's that little triangular yes. lot that being stricken off the plans um, and in our next submission it, it will not appear. Yeah, it won't be included in the redevelopment. Correct. Thank you. Okay. Uh, development signage, I believe at this point in time we are going to sign it. Should we go to get that? We're going to sign it off of one on one. Oh, okay. I thought that this, this, I thought the signage package was being pulled from the application at this time. Both the, the advertising sign that was on 101 plus the the sign package that was submitted uh, for Route 22 and the other two sign locations. Yeah, as, as indicated, um, we were probably not clear. And I spoke to you about it before, Mr. Ritter. Was the we're withdrawing all the site signage at this point? We had discussed specifically the uh, sign on the other side of 22 on that piece that we own that is not in the redevelopment area and the, dis and the, and the problems with that you know, and having to jive it with that particular zoning versus the redevelopment plan. And I don't think we were clear in our discussion that there due to your comments here that we were going to withdraw all signage, right. um, speak with you as well as speak with our clients to what they need for signage and, and have a discussion before we finalize a new plan. So we are withdrawing all the, the signage at this point. Um, so we Again, apologize to you, Mr. Ritter, for having to review that and issue a new report on it. But um, I, think, <laughs> I think we're clear on it now. And I said once we get a design, I think we, we would like to share it with you um, before a formal submission to the board and get your input and thoughts and hopefully well, address it better so you'll have uh, that, less comments. That might be fine. It might be good to do it at the same time we meet uh, with Mr. Sturbins to discuss the landscaping. If we, if we could schedule a yeah, match, that would be a great time. If, if we can get a firmer handle on exactly what we're looking for, um, we will make sure we do that. And we'll, we'll try and aim to have that for you at that time. Thank you, Mr. Sir Barry. Please. Um, all right, moving that, that brings us to you know, about a quarter of the way down page four, having to deal with the landscaping plan. Um, there is a comment regarding the um, plantings along Lock Street and how they're represented in that, that they're, they're a little too formal, I believe. Yes, and I think these comments can be discussed with Paul at Mr. Sturban's office. 
But the thing we were looking for there was just to try to get it to be a little more naturalized, not so much more plants, maybe substituting a few native species and making it look more informal rather than just planting it as a buffer strip. Yeah, yeah, like my soldier roses? No, tree. I'd like it. At least there, I'd like it a little bit. <laughs> we could. I, I, if, if that's acceptable with the board, I would like to meet with Mr. Ritter to discuss those comments and reformulate um, uh, what's needed as far as the plantings. Uh, which brings us to... Well, you had a note as far as the site triangle or the site easements in that that the planting is 20 inches. We're going to revise that on the plan. That would be another item. Uh, you have the sidewalk issue, which I believe we're uh, going to discuss in further detail. Yes. So if we're going to start that now or um, maybe discuss the vacation of Lock Street and then we can come back. To yeah, I think that's best because I think okay. applicant seeks to merge half of the vacated portion of Lock Street with the redevelopment property. The applicant should address <coughs> removal of the existing improvements with Lock Street. Um, on this vacation, the applicant should inform the board as its intent to remove all of these improvements and the applicant should uh, uh, what existing improvements are to be removed and how to distribute and stabilize the like. Uh, it's our intent. Um, uh, and then it's a, the last portion that has to do with the actual vacation of Lock Street will be subject to town council, obviously. It's our intent, um, and I'm going to use A1 as uh, a talking point again. Uh, this portion of Lock Street where we tie back into it, and again, I'm talking um, to it probably three or 400 feet from uh, the intersection, the existing intersection with uh, Route 22. Uh, that pavement in that area is intended to be removed. The base is going to be taken out, and we're looking to regrade that area, seed it, and bring it back to a more natural, a natural form. Um, there are a couple of utilities that uh, Mr. Sturbins and I have to work with as to whether they, you know, they're out here in the street or not, and how, you know, how they're going to be um, eliminated. Um, other than that, we're connecting back into Lock Street uh, in its existing location. We are doing some winding in that area to to make it, a, you know, a better road. Well, I think that addresses my question. I wanted to make sure all the improvements on the piece that wasn't being realigned were coming out. And also, I guess my question is, is that half of the right-of-way, well, not on the piece you're realigning, but that you're pulling it out. Correct. Under normal practice, and I'll be corrected if I'm wrong, that would go to the neighboring property owner. The owner Correct. Of that, which is a function of council, but I would just wanted the board yeah. to understand that some of that would be reverting back to the neighbor. It, can I, I guess I understand. I, I guess that's customary. It's written in the law, I guess. But the the pavement that's there, you're taking all of that out, your half and the half on the other. Yeah, we would eliminate all of Lock Street at that point in time because the right, the, so road the, na the neighbor gets bare ground yeah. at that point. Yeah, and you too. Yeah, that's all I wanted to make sure is that it wasn't yeah. going to be saw cut down the middle. And <laughs> yeah, <laughs> hey, well, I'm half listening, <laughs> and I said I've heard stranger things. That's good. Yeah. Um, what, what, do we have any idea on the impact on residents living there? Time frames and 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 22. How long is that going to take? Uh, the, the, the improvements on Rock Street and the intersection being built on 22 and and the 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 the, the temporary entrance, which is going to be built, uh, that must impact everything around there greatly, right? Well, the the, the temporary to start with is is in this area here. It's about a little little more than halfway up on the uh, property uh, where we're making the connection. Uh, that was done to eliminate some impacts with you know traffic down towards Rosebury and the like in that so that we can keep construction traffic right onto the site of the starting work here. The construction of the new intersection, we anticipate that it's going to take about 14 months after we have all the approvals in place and we can sign the contracts and everything everything gets going. As part of that intersection, this connector road is also going to be started and constructed. And at that time, we'd be working on bringing Lock Street into its location. 
at some point in time, we're going to have to make the hard location from the new Lock Street onto the old Lock Street so there will be a period of time where this portion of the road would have to be closed so that we can complete or you know complete the construction <coughs> in that area. Okay. okay. Is there any point where, where Route 22 is going to be made into a one-lane road or something? No. no? You mean un under... No, the, the, the construction. Oh, the... No, we're pulling, we're pulling the traffic off of Route 22 to work in this area here. Okay. And when they're working on this side here, um, there, are, there are plans. There, there are plans for lane closures and like for particular portions of the construction. But there wouldn't be a shutdown of like the eastbound lane. No, or I'm, not, like that. I'm not anticipating, but there will be lane closures. Yeah, we'll have our traffic expert talk about it. The other thing, too, is as Mr. McGrath was saying, just to give <coughs> the, the neighbors a better idea. This will all be constructed up to here, the well, Lock Street, the old Lock Street is still in place. When we actually have to make the new connection in this general area, that'll be a short period and we'll you know, try to make it as fast as possible so the people will have to go back out Lock Street temporarily. But it's going to be the very last thing we do and the intention is to do that as quickly as possible to avoid disruption to neighbors for a short period of time. But well, that's, that's the point. Um, a quick um, question as to perimeter landscaping. Um, is there any intention to choose the plants or to provide sprinkling uh, of the uh, plants uh, on the perimeter landscaping? We have a situation in town where a uh, commercial development went in and they put a lot of plantings on the road perimeter and they all died. Yeah, I, I think and, the know, intention is with Mr. Ritter's input is to, is to provide a variety of, of more native species that wouldn't require sprinkling. It's mm -hmm. going to be more trees and shrubs versus flowers and things of that nature. Well, these are trees and shrubs, and, and yeah. they, they died because of the lack of... Uh, you, you know the question, <laughs> I, mean, I think. So there, there's we'll, usually we'll, warranties on the <clears throat> plants. What is it, one or two years? Under the municipal land, so we provide a two-year maintenance guarantee once the construction is completed and accepted okay. by the town. Um, but again, I think that's part of Mr. Ritter's, I don't want to speak for him, yeah, thoughts. Well, to we're going to try to pick plants that can withstand the natural conditions they're going to have to deal with out there. Uh, it's, it was not part of our plan to envision they were going to put irrigation in on that area. So the plants we're going to pick, and, and we're talking with that piece there, would be generally hardy to this area. But obviously, with all newly planted material, the first year, year and a half is really when it's important to water them, if you can, and get them established. So that's the, the part that we have to work through. But right. the intent was not to irrigate those. Yeah, well, I think, Thomas, you're talking about the, the, the solar panel things, right? Yeah, I mean, you know, I mean we want to prevent I, I don't yeah. know if you have passed by the solar panel field there lately. Well, they're in bad shape. So yeah, was, so we would want to prevent something like that. I and mean, this is even more important because this is Route 22. This is like I, think no, I don't understand what you're saying. The solar field is, has a lot of dead or weak plants in it. I, agree. I don't want to see that here. But, you know, this is what people will see of a pack on when they come through. Yeah, yeah, yeah understood. So I would suggest that some kind of sprinkling is desirable. Well, we can talk maybe about a longer maintenance period too to get them over the home. I, I I don't I don't remember how what the maintenance period was on the solar. Uh, it's just two years. Two years. It's two years. Uh, okay. One question on the abandonment of Lock Street. Yeah, and I know the state law is better, whatever it is. Half reverts to one owner, half reverts to the other. Uh, and I'm going to say Phil Clark Dyer for not knowing who owns it. Suppose they don't want it and they have that right to reject. Would you people accept that other half of the roadway? Well, of course. Yeah, we don't want to leave an abandoned little, you know, 12 foot wide piece of property. Again, what you're saying you don't is. don't have to accept yeah, the abandoned is that part of the diner? Uh, you know, I, we, we assume, we assume that, that it's part of the, of the diner. diner. We're not 100% sure. It's right behind the diner, so I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. So I don't know. Yeah. The diner you know right here. Would it be this portion of the road? Where's her hat? Where's her hat? Yeah, the diner is behind the diner. So, yeah, yeah, it's it's her house is too. Please. No, her Please. house is down here. We're okay. That end of Lock Street is on the bend. Is on the bend. We're not from from we've what got, we've heard. Yeah, we've got about eight conversations going on at once. It's going to be impossible to create a record here. So if 
one person could speak at a time. I know it's late. I would appreciate it. Thank you. So, so I, think so I don't think we want to hear. I says I don't think we want to hear anything new. We have enough time for planning board comments and for public comments, and um, some suggestions for the next meeting. Sure. Um, we're going to be talking about the sidewalk issues. We want to be prepared for that. Sure. We're also going to be looking for more information on the uh, traffic issue. Um, as Paul's comment states, I, I think we're, the board is mostly in agreement with what uh, Major's comments are there. So be prepared for that. And then we're going to do the, um, the not the site plan, but the, um, uh, the breakup on the property next time as well. So right now, what I want to do is take some questions or comments from planning board members on what we've heard and not really getting to anything new. You want to add anything to that, Tony, as far as what's going to happen in the week? Just to think we need some specificity on what we're looking for in terms of the traffic study uh, so the applicant comes prepared and can submit something uh, in advance of next week's meeting, if that's possible. Uh, in the... Amended and restated redevelopment plan to section 3.9. This is traffic study. The redeveloper shall provide a detailed report of the existing and proposed traffic conditions prepared uh, by one or more qualified professionals. The report shall be provided to the planning board for review during processing of the site plan application. The study shall include the estimated average number of automobiles and the number and size of, or type of trucks or buses that will enter and leave the site each day and during the peak hours, including an analysis of the ability of the existing road system to accept the additional traffic volumes. Uh, there were two traffic reports sub submitted, as I recall, as part of the uh, approval of the, of the uh, general development plan. Uh, there was also, a, we've also received a copy of a report that was submitted to the DOT uh, in February of 2007, but there was no supplemental, and I think that report ge generally uh, regurgitates what, what uh, was contained in the earlier reports. There's uh, some updated information, though. But we did not get an updated traffic study with uh, submitted with this application for site plan approval. Uh, Paul, do you want to comment on, on what's in that report and what you think we, we need? Yeah, the, the, this report, generally speaking, parallels the two previous reports that were reviewed at the time of the general development plan application, and those two reports were actually submitted with this particular application for the site plan approval. Um, one of the things that I noticed is that the background traffic is the same in this report as, as it was in the previous reports. Um, the uh, proposed uh, trip trips that are being presented in the <coughs> February 2017 report are a little higher than the, in the trips that were presented in the reports that were reviewed by the board at the time of GDP. So I think you know Mr. we would expect Mr. Kennel to explain that, <coughs> why, why that's the case when he uh, testifies next week. There is a requirement that there needs to be some specifics on the uh, truck traffic. Uh, this report, nor the previous reports, give a breakdown. You know, For example, if there's 500 trips, it, it doesn't say that 300 of them will be, tr uh, will be passenger vehicles and 200 will be trucks. So I think we would expect Mr. Kennel, when he comes next week, to provide that type of breakdown to the board so that we understand the amount of large vehicle traffic that's going to be going into and out of this development in the future after it's built. Paul, do you want uh, to hear that for the first time at next week's meeting, or do you want some supplemental information in writing so you have an opportunity for your staff to review it? I guess the, the question is, is this February 2017 report was never submitted to the board, so is the applicant going to be submitting this or another report that may be more recent than this February 2017 report into the board at this point, so it becomes part of the record. This is not part of the record. I happened to find this today when I was getting prepared for the meeting tonight, and it was in, in a box of materials that were submitted. Uh, the applicant was responsible for submitting documents that were submitted to the DOT as part of DOT permitting to the board 
and I got a big box. Uh, I think Beth probably got a box at some point in the past yeah. as well. And uh, so I ended up finding this uh, today. So the question is, is this, this going to be submitted or some other report that will be part of the record? And, and that's what Mr. Kennel is going to testify to. Or is he testifying to the two previous reports? I, I don't know. We, we probably need some. Yeah, so sure. let's get into that a little bit. So the, the understanding was that if the board wants the reports, we'll, we'll provide the reports. I'm not, I'm not trying to argue the issue. But the understanding was when we discussed this last time was the information that is supplied to DOT would be supplied to the board secretary. Uh, also, in her, also in her position as township clerk uh, so that it is available to the board and the general public, anybody who wants to get information, and a copy would be directly submitted to Mr. Sturgeons, which has to happen. We have done the same with Phillipsburg. Um, the 3.9 section of the redevelopment plan that Mr. Spazzaro pointed out it says what it says. The, the understanding was kind of twofold: is we would submit the reports for DOT as indicated, and that the 3.9 section applied to uh, construction of buildings that would create traffic. What we're it's not what it says. I, I understand, it, Mr. It's, it's, I'm just going. That's not what it says. It doesn't say site plan application for buildings. It says site plan application. And I know this spin you're trying to put on it, and I just don't buy it. You can make a record if you want, but this is, we and the board were very clear when uh, the GDP was approved that we expected more, a more detailed traffic report at the time a site plan application was submitted. That is now. Uh, and board, if I'm wrong, please correct me. Okay, so That's we, what I remember. we will we will provide the um, the traffic report that Mr. Sturbins indicated that was submitted to DOT. We'll we'll provide multiple copies to the entire board, so it's part of the um, part of the submittal and part of the application and part of Mr. Uh, Kennel's testimony. Um, I can have Mr. Kennel address a few specific issues as to that report and the contents and a few of the items, Mr. Um, Sturbins raised, or I can have him discuss that directly with Mr. Sturbins, whatever the board's pleasure. The other item I'll just point out is 3.9, as we just discussed, talks about accepting additional traffic volumes. As indicated, there's no, the, the application before the board is not creating any additional traffic volumes from the site. It's still the same proposal, we're just putting a road in. Um, those are the reasons why, again, Mr. Spitar, I understand your position. I'm not trying to argue with you. I'm just explaining why we did not submit the report reference for Mr. Sturbins to the entire board. It was our understanding that that was the situation I'm hearing now that the board wants it to comply with 3.9, and we will provide it. I mean, I'm not trying to argue, just explaining why we didn't submit it and why this question is being raised. So we will provide that information. We will provide the testimony so that we comply with 3.9 and comply with Mr. Sturbin's comments. To take it one step further, I apologize for cutting you off earlier. No, that's right. I think that your the report needs to anticipate the traffic that's going to be generated on the roads you're proposing once these pads are built out. To simply say, well, since there's no construction of improvements, that there's no change in the traffic, it's 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 rather self-serving. If this site plan is approved for the roads and then we find out we've got a problem on our hands with traffic in the future as the sites are being built out, what do we do about it then? Oh, uh, that, uh, let me clarify then. You're absolutely right, Mr. Spasaro. So as I was indicating before is, and again, why we didn't submit it now, because our, our impression was we've provided the information we believe we're going to submit it because we, we have a misunderstanding. So not arguing that point, that we believe met the spirit intent of what we discussed before. We still have every intention of when a particular building is being built to have a new, new traffic report. Because what we had discussed at the time of the GDP and other prior appearances before this, this board was that each individual tenant will have a different traffic impact. Some folks may have more 
traffic in general than other folks. Some folks may have more truck traffic, sizes of trucks. Some folks may be 18-wheelers. Some folks may be box trucks, different combinations of those. So we are still have no argument that at each building site plan we will be submitting that. Again, not, not to end run your point, Mr. Spazar, we will be providing the information requested um, tomorrow. We'll provide copies for the entire board. We will have the testimony next week to fully address everything you and Mr. Sturbins have raised. Am I, am I we're misunderstanding each other? Well, I, I want to be clear. I want this report to anticipate the traffic that's going to be generated from these particular locations. It yes. has to. We can't. We, we can't do this in a volume, in a vacuum. No, because nor if, if the plan, if a site plan is approved for the road design, but the road doesn't design with the build out, you know, where are we then? So we've got. To, and if you want to supplement it in the future, if you come in with additional pad sites, that's fine. But I think this is the time for us to dig into this traffic. Issue. Exactly. So, so we are going to provide that. The existing reports do provide for the traffic to be generated by the full build out that's already in there. We will resubmit the reports so that there are full copies for every board member and we comply with the provisions of 3.9. And additionally, we comply with your concerns and Mr. Sturbin's concerns. So we will, we will submit what is needed to address those concerns, comply with the redevelopment plan, and we will have testimony to supplement that as well. I think the key here is. Uh, is the last phrase in 3.9 it, it, it says the ability an analysis of the ability of the existing road system to accept the additional traffic volumes it may be that this board has very limited jurisdiction when it comes to uh, improvements to the state highway we know what those restrictions are like it or not but we're entitled to know what the impact is going to be not only on the state, the state highways, but on other other roads that we do have jurisdiction over. Exactly. No, no argument there. And that information is in the report that will be provided. Again, we will take copies to the entire board, and we will have further testimony. We don't, we don't want to get into the traffic testimony tonight, but we will we will fully explore that and address all of those issues and concerns for you. Right. And there were a lot of questions on the general development plan. And we all agreed that these would be addressed on the site plan. So the questions that you got last time, you're going to get them again. Oh, understand. They're, they're going to happen. I, I understand. So we, um, we, will, we will have the be. reports and the, and the testimony to address that. Okay. Thank you. Thank you for time to clarify. So from what we've heard tonight, are there any uh, comments or questions from planning board members? Hearing none, take a motion to go into public comment. Motion. Second. Okay. Public comment. Any public comments? John Betts, Red School Lane, 225, apartment Y14. Once again, the roadway situation, exactly what Mrs. Spazzaro, Mr. Sturbins, and you, Eric, have been speaking about. The public knows what you're referring to, and I would hope that you do go into those things and go deeper if it has to be done. I understand. All right. And Joe, with Mr. Dowdy's letter, has anything come past the letter, letter stage? Now, um, I mean, okay. you know where, where I've okay. spoken on this, and uh, we've given our input to DOP, uh, DOT, and I have not heard anything back. Yeah, joke. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Mrs. Pizarro. Right, thank you for your comment. Um, I'm Maria Hedden. Maria Hedden from 700 Lock Street. I'd like you to all just please consider if there's some way that you can make a U-turn for Route 22 there. It would uh, probably be pretty impactful because you are directing traffic towards my private lane which is a very dangerous situation for a lot of people to be turning around in that direction. It's a natural way to want to go, and um, it's kind of out of the way. Everybody knows it's kind of out of the way to make your U-turn. So you are directly directing a lot of people towards me. So please consider if there's some solution to that. And, um, you know, because it's a dangerous situation for people not only making the U-turn, but um, just kind of cutting through while things are being 
torn apart and take and put it back together. So um, that's it. That's it. it Please so I can understand solution. your concern. You're saying people would make a left end of the site and then go towards your property. Yeah, because there's no way to make a U-turn. They want to naturally go into the site, and if there's no if there's no way to make a U turn in the air and go back down, down they're going to go down Lock Street and they're going to cut through my driveway, which is a dangerous right turn onto the highway. It's really dangerous, and because um, it's a blind curve, okay. And people do it all the time, but now you're directing. How many people go down Route 22 every day? Thirty thousand, you know. So now you've got a turn lane and a way for them to get back to the mall, a way for them to get back to the their housing development that's in there, or a way just to get turned around because they've missed something on the other side without having to go all the way down to 57 and find a place to turn around mm -hmm. down there. It's a little shortcut. And, and it's, you know, a natural to want to do it the easy way. Huh. Okay, so just consider, is there some way that you can make some sort of thing happen with a U-turn within this connector road? That's just one. Maybe could you come back next week? And yes, I'll I, be here. That would be a great time I'll be here. To, to talk about yeah. it. I think... It's a concern, a real concern. I, I think it is a concern. I think a lot of the people that are making the U-turn to get to the mall are only because they just missed their exit because the right. exit is just a quarter mile, you know, up, right. up the, but it's something and that safety is a real concern. Yes. Yeah. You know, other, other than that, if somebody wants to buy my road, you know. I understand. Thank you for your comment. We'll All right. Take a look at that. <laughs> Any other public comments? Okay. Hearing none. Motion to come out. Motion. Motion second. Second. All right. I think um, I have one one quick comment. I'd like just about two seconds. I'd like to look at the application process. I wouldn't mind again when we're talking about getting these giant sets of plans and only for the plan set. Um, I'd like a uh, PDF version to be supplied in future applications. I won't be happy with a small amount. And if if someone so wants, they could print out an 11 by 17 set. I would have loved to have an 11 by 17 site plan with me today when I was driving around and looking at the site. But I think a PDF, everyone's got the capability of making a PDF set for plans. And uh, I'd like to... Um, I'd like to take a motion to add that to the uh, requirement for the application. I surely second that. Yeah, that's it's not that simple. Not that simple. Yeah. Yeah. No, but it's 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 not to do it. It's to it's for us to make the request to council. The chairman, if you would like, we since that's your preference, I know lots of boards do uh, and counties require submittal on PDF. If you would like. The plan sets we've submitted so far on PDF, we can provide those. Do you want multiple CDs or one to Beth, or how do you want us to handle that? Um, depends on how big the file is and how you save it as a as a PDF. If it's under 10 megs, I'll take it I'll take it through email. Yeah. If it's bigger than no, that, no, they're big because they're CAD drawings. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and it can't be Dropbox. It can't because of the municipal law. Yeah, yeah. So we can. We can talk about it. Just, just we wanted to offer since I, a lot of boards don't want it, 500 sheets of paper, and, and these are a large plan set. So we can right. certainly cut down the amount of paper we send. And obviously, Beth will need a paper copy for the official file. Absolutely. You, you let us know when we put. When we leave this way, you let us know how <coughs> many copies you want in paper, how many on CD, and we will provide those to you. Okay. And that that thank you very much. Sure. And that being said, um, can we make the recommendation to council? For that being you part of it, you, you made a motion, right? I'm, ask, I'm asking for the motion. It, it's, it's. I'll make the motion as the chair if I can. Yeah, I'll can I make a motion. motion? Shall? All right, I'll make the motion to make that part of the application requirement as an electronic version of uh, plans. Yes. Okay, we have the second. Well, Peter second that, and this is yeah, Peter second. So this is just a so, such comment, right? Yes, yes, yeah, it's a recommendation. I, I don't, I don't really have a problem with council, but I think a little thought has to be given to. Some of the things, this, you know, how it's delivered, the form of file. I, you know, most people don't have printers who can handle that volume. I don't even know if we do. Uh, so you'd have to look into the computer side a little bit, I think, before. You can make the motion, it can go to council. You know, they I think they're going to have to look at that. It doesn't take away, yeah. the motion isn't to take away the requirement of the paper copy for every number. No, no, I, I understand that. But, uh, I, but I mean, we have to make sure we can receive it. Yeah, and if we can, and if there's a way for us to receive it, like today, I would have... And I, I don't mean individually, I mean, if, if you can, fine, but even the, the town, there's no sense making a requirement if the town can't accommodate. 
these large files. And right. Oh, there we go. How about we look into the logistics first? All right. See how and be, uh, if we can do it, and then we present it to. Uh, I think that's okay, who, so who's going to so be? Just what's your so motion? we do it with all emotion. So we'll, can somebody look into it then? Who's, who would be able to do that? I mean, Paul, you must. I, I, I've done that ordinance twice. Um, actually, is there's a requirement for electronic files. We also have done where developers have to submit in reduced size copies. So they're half size copies, which are a little more manageable for the board members to deal with at the dais. I mean, you guys must I would be, be okay dealing, with that. You guys must yeah. be dealing with, with electronic files of that nature on a daily basis, right? Honestly, I feel like a, uh, a reduced standalone by 17 would, would satisfy yeah. my requirements. Yeah. Well, maybe well, that would be an easier ordinance to implement. I feel, I'm okay with that. For, why don't we do this? Why don't we ask Paul to circulate for us uh, copies of some ordinances that he's familiar with or that he helped draft that address this issue. We can look at them at the next meeting and we can discuss them. Sure. Sweet. All right, that's we'll good. We'll talk about tomorrow. tomorrow. And so. we can talk about it in a week then. Yeah, right, something about tomorrow before we're done. I have no further comments. Any other further comments by any board members? Mm -hmm. On anything? Question. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I do have Yeah, one. go ahead. <laughs> I don't know if you know, we did receive a complaint today and, uh, on a previous application and Tony would have to, how long do you have to answer this, Tony? 35 days? Yes. Do we need an executive next it's meeting, John? Well, he should. You don't have to do it. We should authorize him to answer the complaint. Okay. Tony, I mean, that this is this is not a secret about that. This has not been distributed to all board members, so a lot of a lot of no, no, them don't know what we're talking about. I'll just a uh, suit filed by uh, Stowaway Storage against the board and uh, Ferugia for the uh, approval of the storage facility. It's a competitor that filed suit challenging the approval. So we've got to defend the board and uh, the applicant needs to defend itself. And I think as a minimum, we can talk down the road, but I think as a minimum we have to authorize Tony to answer the complaint. There's a t it's time dependent and uh, we should, I'd recommend we do that tonight. I agree. And do we want it uh, for a chance to talk about this in the executive? Just you can always talk our, about litigation and executive. Not that. Just to see to see Tony's response. We we can do that next week. I haven't even had time to, yeah. review, to read the complaint. I just saw this. It's like hours old. Are you making a motion for Tony to answer that? Is, is that yes. Okay. Prepare an answer. So okay. I'll, I'll you do that. We have a. Did I hear a second? I'm sorry. Tom, Tom seconded. We have a second. So we have uh, Member Breyer. Yes. I'd like to. Uh, can, can I add the stipulation of I'd like to review the response before I, I, I don't see a problem, but I mean he has to start working. Oh, I agree. He has to start. Yeah. So the motion is to start, but we'll have the opportunity to discuss or review it if we feel. You can. I. I you can't. I, when you see the response, I, I don't think you're going to have a whole lot of input. Okay. <laughs> all right, very Let's do roll call. Come on, all in favor. All right, all in favor. Aye. Aye. Excellent. Sure. Motion to do something with this hearing. No, we should uh, yeah, we we should should let, the notice, uh, let the public know that uh, this the application that was considered this evening is being carried to next Wednesday, a special meeting at 7 p.m. There will be no further notice that is given. Okay. Thank you all. Thank you, Joe, for that reminder. I don't have any other, other comments. Thanks. Next Wednesday, one week from today, 30. 7 o'clock. So no further comments. I'll take a motion to adjourn. Motion. Second. Second. We're, we are all in favor? Aye. Aye. Adjourn. Aye. Thank you.